you know? Like when you think about like being in the agency back in the heyday, like in the 50s, you'd oh, be like, you bro, do whatever you want. come on. Yeah, I mean, you can kill yeah. the president. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 1960, yeah. I think they That's did. weird. I think they yeah. did. Yeah. yeah. Like, wait a second. That's a yeah. big deal. Like, we've been talking about, did the agency hit that dude for how many years? And they're like, yeah, yeah. probably. Declassified probably X or Y yeah. or Z. And they're like, yeah, never mind. Yeah. You know, never probably mind. us. And Don't there's worry about that. And there's aliens. And there's aliens. <laughs> no big deal. Maybe that'll bring us together. Finally, North Korea and America together to fight the aliens. <laughs> The Black Rifle Podcast starts now. All right, we're going to first start out this podcast. <laughs> it's brought to you by... Uh, it's good to have you guys back. It's good to be back, man. Thanks good for to see us. you. Really uh, good to see you. So we have two incredible gentlemen here that we've known for... It's so weird to say that. Like, fuck you guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, that's funny. So, uh, Dagan and Matt, basically. So, we tried this a few months back. So, just for context for everybody, we tried this a few months back. And we fucked up the audio to that. It, not only the audio, but where we filmed it was just so bad that we, we're going to have to do this one again. And plus, I was like, ah, we could have gone into some other stuff. I just thought it could have been done way better. So, yeah. we're going to try this again. So... I don't know. Where do we start, fellas? Where do we start? We're just going to redo the whole thing verbatim, yeah. right? We're just happy to kind be of. here, man. It's cool to see you. <laughs> really cool to see you. We've known each other for, uh, I don't know, 15? I don't when did, No, 2009. 2009 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. I, I came over from Iraq to Afghanistan. Yep. You guys were there. We all met at the wonderful and beautiful Ariana Hotel. Wonderful. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Five yeah, yeah. stars. Five stars. <laughs> now, if we wanted to, we could rent those rooms at the Ariana from the Taliban. Is that right? I'm going next month. Yeah. Are you really? No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. We should because yeah. I'm. I think we're sending them like a couple million dollars a a week anyway. So we I might think as so. well help them out there too by renting the rooms. So. I, yeah. I mean, why? Why not? I mean, I think we, we're. I would be okay with. We, with us sending billions of dollars to the Taliban if it was kind of like laced with something else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if it was just yeah. cash and we'd like put something else in it, like, I don't know, you know, like maybe, maybe, maybe causes some type of like low level degradation of their brains to the point where they, they just, you know, functionally become even more retarded over the course of like two or three months. And then, then you can be like, well, shit. Okay, cool. Now let's, let's see if we can have a thriving population of people that might be able to think through a problem. I don't know. No, I like the idea. It's perfect. I don't think, yeah, I don't think we've helped them enough. You don't think so? No, right. I think we can do a little more. Like cash wise, or yeah, we're all like we're was. all of it, yeah. just like back up, <laughs> back up the C five galaxy, yeah. fill it full of gold and treasure, right? And maybe just like go around, maybe 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 just like go around some neighborhoods and just grab some kids and just go like, yeah, let's try yeah. something else. Let's something see how it goes. Yeah. What do you guys yeah. think about that? What do you think about? I think like, it's a great idea. <laughs> like, what do you think about? So our post-withdrawal out of Afghanistan, we talked a little bit about this on the last one. Okay. And why why are we so fucked up? Like, that, why? That's a good question. That's a really good question. I think, um, I think accountability. I think the uh, – honestly, I think the voters have quit holding politicians accountable. I think we're so prosperous as a nation that we have it so easy that we um, we don't have to think about uh, the mistakes that we make as a nation. Mm. And I uh, don't mean to get all serious on it, but I think that's it pretty much, you know. And um, nobody, nothing gets done anymore. Nobody cares. You know, we all get our shopping done and we all go to the mall and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's the old story, but, it, the, right. it, you know, and... Maybe it's because only X percentage of people actually serve. So they're the yeah. only people that actually saw what was going on. But yeah, and, w- and what's the, you know, what's the negative? Re- There's no, I mean, how long did it take to, to get back into something else? 
right. months, weeks, you know, depending on whose timeline you're looking at, you know. Right. Like, so, yeah. Lessons learned. You know, I don't. Yeah. I don't think so. Which is, which is actually a question like I have for you. It's like the world, like right now, post post withdrawal, the the world's in a really shitty place. Like, you know, is there hope? Like from your perspective. Ah, oh, man, I don't know. I I, I think yeah. I, I, I'm a fairly optimistic person most of the time, so I always think about, you know, there there has to be hope. I think <clears throat> I, it, to unpack this in a way that maybe makes sense, I don't know, and not to take too much mic time, but... Um, no, take it. I'm interested. <laughs> no, seriously, I want to hear it. I, I just, fundamentally, I think, to your point, I think, I think politicians just in general they continue to fail the American public. I think the premise of what we do or what they do, what the United States government does, like the entire cornerstone of how they succeed is to provide safety to the American public. So through safety, you can grow a thriving economy, educate your children, like you can do all those all those things. So the, the cornerstone of what I think they're responsible for is that. And then... If we take it that step further, you have to determine, are these wars jeopardizing the sovereignty of the United States, and is it worth the blood and treasure of a large-scale occupying force to mobilize and then spend two decades, three decades, whatever that might be, trillions of dollars, thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of lives between Iraqi, yeah. Afghanis, and Americans, uh, is it worth it? The, the, the closest I can come up with to try to make sense of this is from a, from a brass tax perspective, most politicians are, um, they don't have the experience mm -hmm. in order to mobilize the military. They don't understand the gravity of their decision. And they, they make these flip it decisions. Uh, for instance, in this is, um, and I don't care at this point. So let me let me preface this and put out a disclaimer. Yeah, right. I'm gonna run my mouth. Right. And I don't give a flying fuck <laughs> if you, anybody doesn't like right. it. I we're, don't care. Yeah, you know we're why? Certainly not experts. No, so. I'm not an expert. Yeah. I, I'm not a foreign policy expert. Right. Like I don't give. I don't give two shits. And when I say this, it's not even me going, oh, I don't care, but I really do. I don't care. You know why? Because I believe in radical freedom. Yeah. I'm radically free. I don't care if I'm wrong. I don't care if you disagree. If you're out there and you're like, oh, man, I really disagree with Evan. Don't care. You know why? Because I believe in living a radically free existence, which is actually a quote from John Paul Sartre, who, for those of you that don't know, he was a French philosopher that was also a communist. So I'm stealing a quote <laughs> from a communist yeah. to ultimately translate what I believe, which is I believe in radical freedom. I think we should be in complex debates and dialogue mm -hmm. at all points in time, and I don't think that we should ever adhere to a party line and or regurgitate uh, other people's talking points that don't have any experience. I don't give a flying fuck what a news anchor or some YouTube pundit has to say about Afghanistan. You know why? Because they've never had the dirt of Afghanistan on their fucking boots. So right. they can get bent. Right. Yeah. Yep. Let me just preface this yeah. by saying this. It's a hell of an opening. It's a hell of an <laughs> opening, man. Yeah. yeah. I, and I, like another I, thing. I am a super binary guy. I've been this way my entire life. You either like me or don't like me. At the end of the day, I live by a set of values and principles. Mm -hmm. One that I will never capitulate on is that I am radically free and fuck you if you don't like it. Yeah. It is what it is. No, I love that. So, I love that. No, go ahead. My job, or at least, uh, sorry, our job when we take an oath to the Constitution and ultimately the ethos of America is to protect our country so other people can live radically free. Yeah. And we spread that. Yeah. Hopefully. You know, it's crazy because, I mean, what, what you're saying resonates because most people have never read the Constitution or the, the uh, Declaration of, no. of uh, Independence. And if you read it, 
you realize that's what it's about. It's about radical freedom. And it's about individual responsibility. And, you know, a lot of people, when they look at me or they look at you or something, they would say conservative. Well, I'm probably, you know, if you want to put a label on me besides, you know, crazy person. <laughs> center right. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, oh, you're yeah, center yeah, right. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm, I'm a freaking progressive. I, I need radical change, but progressive in the way that they probably don't see it. No. I'm using that word differently. You know, I don't think... Things need to radically change. Well, even if you just took it, took a look at the word liberal, right? Which is if we if we took a look look at the evolution of the term liberal and conservative, depending on where we are in time, right. it takes on a different context and maybe a different color uniform. Sure. So, I just think that less government, better, right? I mean, if we just like yep. if we just go down to like the, the the nuts and bolts, the the sticks and rocks of this entire conversation and the ethos of what I'm trying to get to is like less government more better, right? And like, why is the First Amendment and why is having an opinion so important is because it's a true measure of the health of a free society. Yeah. Why are firearms so important? Because it's a true measure of a free society. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. So mm-hmm. the first and the second, when we take a look at how they work together and, and how important those two things are, it's it's a testament to individual freedom. Yeah. And that's, from my perspective, I, I look at it. I'm like, yeah, if that's what we get to like spread internationally, and we talk about like radical freedom, and we talk about living free, right, dude, live free or die. When yeah. you think about like live free or die, when you think about freedom and it, what it means to you and how important it is for me, it's it's definitely now at this point in my life at you know 46, almost 47 years old. I know one fucking thing. I'm way into freedom, man. Yeah. yeah. Just leave me be. Just leave me alone. Yeah, leave yeah. me alone. Yeah. Let's, you do you. I'll do me. If you need help, I'm here. If not, just, yeah, just let me do my thing. I don't. Yeah, what's freedom mean to you? What's it, what's it look like at home? What's it look like in your life? Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on how you, how you measure it, right? Like, everybody's got to pay taxes. I mean, nobody's coming in and oppressing me or affecting what I do on a day-to-day basis outside of my day job, right? Like Mm -hmm. for the most part, I'm kind of free to do whatever I want. Um, But every, you know, it depends almost how hard you take a look at it, right? Because more taxes, more government involvement and just daily functions, you know, and you have your two parties and I don't like it to be that binary, but it's almost like we have in one sense, I'm very free in the other sense, depending on how hard I want to take a look at it and really get down into the weeds there's probably a lot of government involvement that now that wasn't, you know, our fathers or mm-hmm. our grandfathers and so on right. and so forth. So it's like, can I do what I want? Pretty much. You know what I mean? But there's seems to be a shrinking, you know, uh, playing field, if you will, you know, depending on, again, how you look at it. Mm. Yeah, just tr- Try to build a shed on your own property. <laughs> right. You know, I was like, like, wait, do yeah. I own this? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I thought I owned this property. Yeah. Do like, I need a fishing It license? was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I read, I, I read that, or I had this meme somebody sent me, or I, whatever, this super cool meme where it was like, what the world thinks of a libertarian and it wants, which is like a tank and explosives and all this stuff, you know, and then the reality is, it's just a guy at a city council meeting trying to build a shed in his backyard. <laughs> right, like right. That, yes. That's that's all he's doing, right? Exactly. Yeah. I just yeah. don't exactly. want somebody to come in and tell and me I can't plant you know, a garden. People always think tank and all that. And what I always picture is I picture guys like, I picture a guy in a garden with his kids, teaching them how to live off the land with like an AR slung over his back just in case. Just in know? case. And hopefully he'll never use it. And yeah. That's the thing, you know, it's that thing that Rogan always says about a warrior in a garden or a gardener in a war or whatever, you know. You want to be a warrior in a garden, not a gardener in a war. Right. And, you know, that's that's what we're all striving for. Mm. So what about, okay, so thinking about, like, misconceptions. So people always have misconceptions of people like us, I feel like they— they kind of put us in these hole, you know, you're conservative. White men. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I'm su- super curious about, like, the business. Right. So 
what are like the biggest misconceptions that people have of this company <clears throat> or the people that work here? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I think probably the you know, most. Because we were talking about yeah. Starbucks earlier and you <clears throat> told me there were those guys there that you know and, you know, so that kind of clicked I, that question for me. Well, granted, I'm the founder, so I, I think – let me rewind. I'm, I'm stepping on myself here, which is I think step one would be the common misperception is that we're, we're a small company and it's just like me and Matt, like right. roasting coffee. I'm like, yeah. yeah, dude, we have like, you know, at this point, I mean, we have 700 plus employees. That There's a lot of people that work here. We have 30 coffee shops. Yeah, that's amazing, and, by the way. Is it three zero now? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. So, don't get me wrong. I mean, yeah, it started with just a few guys. It started with me in in my garage, right? Well, right. that's the American dream. That's the 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 American dream is to build something out of your garage, and ultimately that pays your mortgage, and maybe you can hire the people you care about, like make an impact in your community, mm -hmm. give some money back. Like this is the this American dream. I'm a capitalist. I, I like yeah. building things. It's a super complex and interesting problem. So there's there's a there's a perception like we're just a marketing company too. It's like no, I'm a manufacturer. Like we roast millions of pounds of coffee a year. Uh, I have a sixty thousand ro this sixty thousand square foot roasting facility and ten plus acres in Manchester, Tennessee, which is Coffee County. And there's oh, a reason awesome. why. There's a reason why I, I put it there. You know, it was a um, underemployment rate area in Coffee County just outside of, of Nashville and then oh, that's cool. You sought it out. Like, you yeah, found I did. It. That's yeah, cool. yeah. 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 Like I didn't hire a bunch of consultants. I literally <laughs> did a map study overlay, looked at where, where does FedEx, UPS, all the main shipping, where does it come out of? There's a basically a, a, a region out there, right? Close mm -hmm. to Nashville. Um, I drew a circle around how many miles would be optimized you know, I li literally like with a marker. Yeah. I was like, go find some property out there. <laughs> they came back. One of them was in, just so happened to be in Coffee County. I was like, you're like sold. Fucking sold. <laughs> yeah. Done. Yeah. yeah. And call Done. That a clue. That's a sign. Yeah. 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 Well, everybody, everybody out there in the, in the roasting facility just so happens to be, uh, uh, they have other large scale manufacturing right there. And so it was easy for me to get skilled labor. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and Tennessee's red. I don't do, I don't build infrastructure or logistics within blue states. It's my way of saying get fucked. Yeah. You know, like it, it, I'm sure there's some great politicians that work in some of them. That's great. Oh, yeah, and I'm there's sure. some incredible customers that obviously like California is like 49% conservative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you have people and COVID taught us this, which is when you have people that are in charge of your economic conditions within a city, county, or state, when they're unhinged, you will reap the negative <sighs> effects mm. of their ill-orchestrated decision-making. Yeah. And I am... It's not even luck. I went and did business with the people that I can understand. I can right. speak... To them and talk to them and say, hey, how do we impact our local community? And there's a reason why we're in Texas, Utah, Tennessee, folks. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. There's a reason why. Yep. Because we can empathize and ultimately speak to people that speak our same language. Well, I think that circles, we brought up COVID and that circles back to like the Afghanistan, like the Afghanistan withdrawal. It, we're glued to it. You know, guys that had skin in the game, like you said, that, that you know, still got dirty, you know, stuff in their, in their basement that yeah. still has, you know, Iraq and Afghanistan and God knows wherever else. And then, and then look at COVID and zero negative repercussions no. for, you know, who got I mean? fired like, over those? Like how quick did we get over that? Yeah. You know? What's it called? They memory hold it. It's just, yeah. It's memory just, hold it. Forget yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. They, it's like, a, it's like, uh, I've never done this, but I just hear like guys when they, do, when they do ketamine, a lot of guys are doing ketamine treatment right. for PTS and some yep. other things. They're calling it a K hole. Yeah. It's like yeah. the country yeah. went into a fucking yeah. K hole for a yeah. couple of years. We're like, Oh God, I yeah. gotta go. Which goes back to the freedom thing. And I think it, it, it speaks to something that we talked about in our last podcast, which it was very evident to me that 
most of America had never been afraid, like truly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, I mean, this has been talked to death, but you know, the the government provided an easy solution. I'm afraid. Let me take it. Safety. I'm willing to give up anything for that. And it's it's odd because for guys like us, and for people like us, and you know, our our families. We look at that, and it seems insane mm-hmm. to just give away your freedom. The people are like, "No, please give it away." I, you know, here, take my freedom. So it's just odd to see. You know, I, I've been thinking about this a lot. Like the 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 new thing that I'm into. Yeah. Just recently, I shouldn't say I'm into. I, I, I like I love philosophy just in general. Like it's, right. it's super interesting to me, but. This is going to sound, I'm not going to name drop or try to sound too fucking heady because I hate it when people sound like this, but like Socrates went to trial. He was convicted of um, influencing, negatively influencing the youth. And then he, rather than being, uh, rather than, than escaping or, um, being exiled, he chose death because he said a life without philosophy is not worth living, basically, right? And what he would do is he would, like, walk the streets and just ask people questions and talk to them. You know, it's the Socratic method, right? You mm, just, right. like, openly pontificate in, in, in public forum and just have these crazy conversations with people, and he would tear people apart, the Athenians, like the mm-hmm. Athenian... Uh, 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 power infrastructure, yeah, just yeah, like right. their narrative. Or yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. So, but he like, was put to death for corrupting the mind of the youth. Like, that's misinformation. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. misinformation. It's fake news. Right. And I was thinking about that. I was like, okay, so that was several hundred years be- BCE or before right. Christian era or BC, however the fuck you want to relate to it. And I couldn't help but think about. Nothing has changed. No. Nah. Like you're going to be publicly crucified yeah. in social media by people that disagree with you, by the way. They're like, you're wrong. You're this. You're that. Okay. Well, same thing was happening mm-hmm. 2,000 years ago with people just like tearing people up for having a different opinion. Oh, by the way, awesome. Yeah. 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 Fuck yeah. Let's get it on, man. Like, yeah. hey, by the way, that's called a meritocracy. May the best idea win. May the best and idea win. Pl- plug it in, run some pressure through some ideas, change your mind. Yeah. That's okay, too. I can start this podcast in less than two hours, be convic- convinced of something, and then two hours later, I'll fucking change my mind. Change and guess mind. what? Sure. It's our, it's our right. rights. It's our fucking God-given rights as Americans to do what we want and say what we want. Absolutely. We'll, we'll throw your fucking tea in the harbor. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. And it's awesome, man. Yeah. So, like, if you think about, like, okay, so this is Socrates, right? He's, yeah. he's like, the, 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 the father of, of Western philosopher, uh, philosophy. Is, I think they else before him. But either way, he was convicted and then sentenced to death for his opinions, yeah. his yeah. ideas. Yeah, not much has changed. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, no. Like it really so, makes me want to find out what his ideas are. You know, yeah. anybody that's that dangerous. Right? right? If you're that dangerous to the state, and yeah. how fucking incredible is that? Where that's it's amazing. like, guys, the state is always going to take issue with people that have a sophisticated or unsophisticated look at the way the state is is run. And if they're causing people to Look objectively at their decisions. Uh, here's your dose of hemlock. Mm-hmm. And by the way, it happens in social media all the time. Yeah. Which is like, we disagree, even though it's protected by the Constitution on these platforms that are essentially pu- publicly. Um, yeah, they're, they're public all, squares. Right, they're public, public forms, squares. Yeah. yeah, they're public squares. Right. We disagree with your opinion. So we're not going to allow you or your platform or your information to be disseminated because we disagree with you. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, I mean, it's kind of our job, just I think as humans, in order to just have a complex dialogue around everything. Yeah. Do you think it's coming back? Do you yeah. feel like it's coming back? I think you with do? Elon. Yep. Yeah, the Twitter files. Did you? Oh yeah, I went down the that? rabbit hole oh, on did that. You? Yeah. Yeah, like Matt that's, Taibbi is that's fucking right? fascinating human. Yeah. That was that's terrifying. You've terrifying. Got the, you've got the FBI on a speed dial, or they have you on a speed dial. That's not <laughs> good, you know. Meaning, so, meaning Twitter has. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's it's awesome. Yeah. I I think it's great that we've exposed it for what it is. Right. But what's fascinating is the echo chambers. So oh, we have to, you know, be aware of ours and mm-hmm. fight yeah. fight to get out of it. I follow a lot of people on social media who I do not agree with. And, you know, so I find out how they're thinking. But there are so many people that haven't even heard of the Twitter files. Oh, yeah. You know, 30 years ago, it would have been a Pulitzer Prize. Oh, absolutely. Now they're like you know, threatening jail to Matt Taibbi. You know, he was threatened with jail by a sitting elected official Mm -hmm. with prison for Mm -hmm. reporting the news. Mm -hmm. You know, and why is that not headlines? Why is every news organization, why is that? Why are are they not terrified to think that they might be next Mm -hmm. and we should put this at the top? Yeah, well, if you can pinpoint the moment in time that journalism died you know what i mean like yeah. as far as objective like they yeah. used to push back you know they used to be kind of you know neutral so to speak you know their job was to seek the truth and find the truth but have they like that that's the thing that i i, I keep coming back to which is we say that and I'll, I'll regurgitate exactly what you just said because i've said it too i'm like i used to be but was it yeah, you like that's, to think that's yeah, the thing that I keep. It? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, maybe not. Because there was less opportunity to dig in and double check. You those, couldn't. Where you couldn't. Or so is you it had just to take their word for it. They could get away with a lot more back then because didn't have the interwebs. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Maybe. How fucking lucky. You know, like when you think about like being in the agency back in the heyday, like in the fifties, oh, be like, bro, do whatever you want. Come on. Yeah, you, I mean, you can kill yeah. the president. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 1960, yeah. I think they That's did. That's weird, I think they did. Yeah. I, I like, you know, somebody was asking me about it, I was like, was like uh, you know, and everybody's heard my opinion on that. I'm like, okay, so let me just unpack this. I'm going to give you a two-minute unpack for this. Okay, so me and all my buddies that have been going around for fucking years, let's say seven years, and actually from 1940 to 1960, let's say me and all my buddies, we have an endless slush fund of money, and we've been cruising the globe, overthrowing countries and Meddling, conducting and doing, conducting assassination for 20 years. We want. The president of the United States rolls out of bed one day on the morning of our operation when we're expecting air coverage and says, "Fuck it, you guys don't get air support." And then fires most of us. Mm-hmm. Ah, how does he not get a moonroof? That's all I need to know. Like how does he keep his fucking head on his shoulders? Yeah. He doesn't. You just yeah. fucking And then you're screwed men, over. And then your men that you trained are our machine gun yeah. down on the beach yeah. and you're dealing with guys who were battle hardened here at the end of their careers you're damn right you're, you're gonna off that dude dude you are hard t at the end fuck yeah you roll out of bed the morning we're getting ready con- to conduct a ground <laughs> invasion a big one a big one that we've been training for since yeah. the eisenhower administration yeah. like we've spent countless hours we've got like a thousand dudes on the there beach. There was a mew steaming yeah. off the coast, just sitting there ready to go. Like, and I told you I did my senior thesis on this. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. And so my dad was a fighter pilot in the Air Force. Right. His friend was on, was one of the um, guys that got pulled over to provide air cover. He was in the air. That's and fucking I, cool. So I, this is the only A I ever got in high school, by the way. He wrote me a letter. No way. To put into the the thing about so his badass. experience. And he said he flew air cover over the top of the beaches and we watched the um what are those big um anti- the APCs yeah, the or, APCs, the, yeah, yeah. or, or, or the um, anti aircraft. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Soviet anti aircraft. Yeah, yeah. They leveled those things down and were like, you know, fucking strafing the dudes in the water. And he said it's the only time he's ever not been proud to be an American. He said, oh, I was ashamed so to be an American. At that moment. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, 
anyway, that was crazy. But, but my point in that yeah. entire conversation is like you don't even need to think about the conspiracy about Lee Harvey and all these other yeah, guys. Yeah. It's like, hey man, I'm just telling you from personal experience, from knowing a bunch of dudes in this industry, that's like you plan a ground invasion. In the in 1960, like outside of technology today, with all, with with us, a, gr- a bunch of people like us that are actually more battle hardened, like mm-hmm. they hit the fucking beach in Normandy, they jumped into Italy, they were yeah. in fucking Africa, they did all this stuff. These are the guys. They're the subject matter double PhDs in assassination, sabotage, yep. in covert warfare. Like they are the guys. Oh, you decide between orgies that you're just going to pull air support. Yeah. And you, th- like, how did you think that was going to end up for you as a guy that were like, you have no dexterity or even a closeness to the relationship of these are the people that I'm just getting ready to fuck over? Dude, fucking over the mobs, one thing. You can sick out the, yeah. the FBI and like go yeah. door to door. You you screw a yeah. gaggle of morons like yeah. us. Like, woo, God. Maybe it man. was the right call. It's nasty. But let's make it a little earlier. Make it earlier. Not mm-hmm. morning of, dog. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. not when boots are hitting the water. Yeah. It's too late. You're yeah. you're hard committed at that point. Yeah. It's too late. You've got men on the beach. Yeah. But in either way, like yeah. Like it's your duty, which I find it ironic that he wrote a book called Profiles and Courage, and then he supposedly made this incredible decision the morning of that was like saved us from World War Three against the Soviets and blah 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 blah. It's actually no, you just let a, a, a thousands of men die on a beach, and then other or, or, or I should say hundreds, and then thousands were imprisoned after that, and you decided that was the best because we're, oh, that's going to hide the American intervention if we, it, because right. if we had aircraft, then they would know it was us. Because like, oh a, my God, it's what? A, it's a big secret yeah. that we want Castro out of Cuba. You, you, they were holding parades in stadiums yeah. in Florida. They were like, Cuban exiles were were like marching around and <laughs> oh man they're they're never gonna find out it's us who knows like anyway like by the way it, like who cares if I'm wrong it's, it's still funny to talk about right it's, yeah it, absolutely yeah it, could have been the right call yeah. maybe it was and how long was that on the news for oh by the way we probably did it <laughs> oh the exiles the exiles had a ground invasion in cuba that was what was reported like right? uh, you know walter crockite was like oh a, a gaggle of organized <laughs> gaggle. cubans like decided to try to take cuba back meanwhile what the the infrastructure and logistics required to conduct a fucking amphibious right. invasion <laughs> what <laughs> yeah some exiles with a couple fishing boats yeah that's what they did you're right that's hilarious i love but it you see what i mean 100 percent, yeah and, and it was on the news what was that a couple months ago my timeline is completely fried but when they was twitter whatever x oh yeah we probably you know that was probably us you know yep everybody just went yep probably yeah you know yeah like wait a second that's a yeah. big deal like we've been talking about did the agency hit that dude for how many years and they're like, yeah, yeah. probably declassified probably X or yeah. Y or Z. And they're like, yeah, never mind. Yeah. You know, never probably mind. Yes. And Don't worry about that. And there's aliens. And there's aliens. No big deal. I think that's a distractionary device. Yeah. I think that's my two. I, I, I think I think this is a distractionary advice, which yeah, is like I concur on that one. And I'm just like trying to unpack this and follow my logic for two seconds, which okay. is okay, so if aliens landed on Earth, okay, the technology required for aliens to land on earth means that they're so far more advanced than we are that we have it, it, essentially it would be like a, a dog looking at us like they mm. don't have the same level of comprehension as we do not even close and okay so is it just like an experimental ship with a couple of these small guys like cruising around and they just like forget them in space like they yeah. crash okay so let me just yeah. put uh, i'm gonna rewind so you travel the equivalent of thousands of years yeah. in, a, in a technology that is the equivalent of us versus a dog. 
and you crash? And you crash. Come on, man. Yeah. Like, come on. You don't, you don't crash. Like, you yeah. don't. I'm sorry, guys. Like, right. it doesn't work like that. You can't, like, counteract physics as we know it as a, as a species, as a fucking dude walking around upright, and then all of a sudden have the technology to travel, like, billions of fucking miles and then, oops, and we gas. fucking ran yeah. out of gas? <laughs> like, what? Mid-flight. What the yeah. fuck are you talking about? You're a crash landing on yeah. anything. Yeah. This doesn't make sense, man. Or, and this was like... Or just get observed. Yeah, yeah. Like, if they don't... If if you've got that technology, you're not going to get observed if you don't want to be observed. No. You're just going to hang out. Well, that's out. the real question is, do yeah. you want it to be true? Yeah. Is it a distraction? Is it not a distraction? Do you want it? I want it to be true so bad. I want it to be true. Yeah. Like, I really do. Because, I, I mean, come on, because man. Because why not? Yeah. Like, we need something else. <laughs> you know I mean, we like, need some we, shit. We need something. Yeah, we you need know. somebody else to fight, right? Or, or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that'll bring us together. Finally, North Korea and America together to fight the aliens. The, the common know? enemy. Yeah. Right. And this guy. I don't know. I just want it to be true. I don't know why I want it to be true, but I, I hope it is. <clears throat> I do... Like in in my mind, I'm I'm thinking about this. I'm like, okay, so maybe, right? So in a in in my small fucking stupid little brain, maybe some shit was left here. Yeah. Totally plausible, right. right? I have no I that 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 to me is more likely than like, yeah. yo, dude, these guys aren't crash landing. Yeah. You know that, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. come on, man. Yeah, like the seeding theory or whatever, <laughs> where where maybe they came here a long time yeah, yeah. ago. And yeah, seated yeah. and left. I yeah. can see that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do we, yeah, we went down to my, I took a vacation down to the Yucatan Peninsula. We did the Mayan ruins, you know, or the, yeah. and like on the side of one of them uh, was this, it was a DNA helix. No, shut the fuck up. 100%, Seriously? That they had carved into it, you know, and I remember looking at it and go, you know, and of course the guide's like, yeah, people got all these theories that, you know, like how, we're talking about human sacrifices are happening right over here. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, dude's just chill, you know, chiseling out to the, you know, 16th decimal point <laughs> a, a DNA helix. Like, how does that happen? Yeah. Right. Or maybe he's like hoping he doesn't get chosen next. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As the Why next. Keep taking this I've been down. working this. <laughs> Stay busy. Sweet design. <laughs> yes. not, not done yet. Yeah. Still need my head. <laughs> just saying, like, I can't finish this like thing, you know. Yeah. How do you know it's going to turn out? You know? Yeah. I don't know. I I do believe that this distractionary device is ultimately <clears throat> it's an information war against our enemies internationally. So if we're publishing things like we have mm-hmm. alien this or alien that, oh, what, what, the Iranians are are going to be like, what? Yo, yeah. the the fucking gringo has like yeah. Space technology. Like, so what's then, the gimmick? yeah, maybe they have Light, lasers yeah, and lightsabers. Well, and the other thing is, yeah. is if we crash something on somebody's soil, we can say not ours. Yeah, That's maybe. some alien shit. That's yeah. some alien shit. Because if it's not yeah. traceable and it's not made of material that is like what I would say is commonly is, is known, commonly right. known. So if it's a new technology made of material that's not commonly known with no traceable aspects. It's perfect. Alien. I it's love alien technology. Story. It's a so great cover story. It is. Yeah. So then it's like. It's can... not made of alloy that they can trace to a certain factory or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. None no, of the components of yeah. would be manufactured in, in. Yeah. Well, that totally makes so much sense now when you put it that way. It's like, yeah, of course. It's a drone. Yeah. It's a drone. It's a drone. Alien technology. Of, yeah. If you happen to shoot one down or see one in the sky or whatever it is. It's not us. And we can say, sure, must be the aliens, man. I'm not, oh, you know, the alien technology that we announced a couple years ago, we've been seeing them too. Must you know? It. Oh, <laughs> shit. We've been seeing them too over here, guys. You know, I and mean, that's what it's going to turn out to. Like, oh, seriously, China? Did you saw some aliens too? <laughs> like, man, shit. this shit's crazy, right? We're seeing all over Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's always in military zones. You know? yeah. I wonder why. Because the aliens have traveled, you know, a billion miles or whatever it is. They're the the first thing they're gonna want to do is like one, look in your butt. That's the first thing, right? Yeah. Because they're like, oh that's shit. Why hope, that's why hope is real. Yeah. <laughs> so you can get scooped up and yeah. fucking probed. Why hope is real. Like that's the other thing, is like the human interpretation of alien intervention is like 
why are like every alien abduction from like the seventies includes like these rednecks getting fucking stuff stuffed up their butts. Yeah, why does That's it, every one of them. It's like, oh man, they took me into a lab and stuffed a bunch of stuff up my butts. So it's like, <laughs> it sounds like you just got really fucked up and did a bunch of stuff that you really wanted to do deep inside. <laughs> and now you're like, whoa, those aliens abducted me. I definitely wasn't John and I in my camper feeling each other's fucking prostates. Definitely not. You know what I mean? Yeah, it always goes straight there. It always goes it straight, does. straight to the six. It's fucking yeah. weird. Straight to the like, sex. yeah, man. They're 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 literally traveling light years out here to stick a probe right up your ass. The first thing <laughs> they're gonna do is like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, hey, let's see what's going on there. Like, yeah. their uh, poop poops yeah. <laughs> poop yeah. system. <laughs> Yeah, they're poop. yeah, like their te- technology isn't advanced enough. They just need a little <laughs> DNA from you. They need to look up your fucking waste system. <laughs> Let's g- Why hey. Not? hey fellas, I know we've traveled light years to get here. The equivalent of like the the pinch and zoom in, in our phone with the level of technology that we have. The first thing we're gonna do is strap one of these fucking hairless monkeys to a table and stuff something up its yeah. ass, yeah. right? Yeah. Right? Like absolutely. Priorities of work. Right. Right. <laughs> That's all they're doing. It's just a, it's just it's just an orchestra of aliens that are traveling the galaxy, probing different assholes. <laughs> I can, I'll I tell you what, real. my dog's going to be used to it when they get here. <laughs> yeah, right? <Yeah. laughs> Isn't that what you do to every animal you pick up? I almost, I almost oh, got yeah. it. That's yeah, I just pick up strays. Yeah, Jump in, little buddy. Yeah. Hey, first thing, let's check out that prostate on you, you know? <laughs> oh, Hard I, did, did I ever tell you guys that story? <laughs> uh, God, I've had a lot of caffeine. This is going to be a fun show. Did I ever tell you that story about... Um, my wife and I went to the, we went to the vet because my dog had a piece of uh, grass stuck in his eye, and um, so the vet and I'm like, I'm telling you, I'm at my comedic best when I'm with <laughs> my wife vet. because <laughs> I am wife. I am deadpan when I need to be. Right. Like you can't make me laugh. I can sell like like stone. Like it it, it doesn't matter. So there's a piece of cheek grass in his eye. They pull it out. And he's getting a medication. And um, and I was like, I was talking to the doc and I was like, okay, so you know, I could you maybe check like upstairs or or the the downstairs, like his his poops have been a little bit runny lately. I was up there the other day rooting around and it just doesn't feel right. How'd it go? She looks at me, she was like, she just didn't skip a beat. This is how smart this woman was. And yeah. if I wasn't already married, I might have proposed right then because right. she didn't even skip a beat. She pretended whatever I just said, she didn't hear it and or I didn't say it and just kept going. <laughs> and then I don't have time for this shit. I don't have time for this idiot. Like I don't have time for this idiot. And this is like this is a phase of my life where that's all I was doing to my wife. So we we get back to the vet tech, which now I'm going from right highly sophisticated. Right, yeah down to, uh, you know, it's like 20 years old, like right, younger yeah. person. And she's like, this is the medication for your dog, you know, like two, ta- two, two pills a day with food. And I was like, do you have any in suppository? Was good, right. And she's like, no, <laughs> what is I don't. This guy's deal? <laughs> Why? And I was like, can you? Give them to him suppository. <laughs> she was like, she was like, is that an option? I don't think so. Do you know? I don't do that. You Does know, she know like, don't, you at all at this point? Not at all. Oh, These perfect. people have zero context to who I am, what I'm saying, or what I'm doing. My other favorite one was Your like, my wife curious. is like, my wife is so used to this shit yeah, yeah. to the point of which it's so much fun. We're at the, uh, I've told this story before, but it's like one of my favorites where we're getting the ultrasound yeah. for the, our first child and the nurse I've is like doing this, this. You haven't heard this? No. So, <laughs> so she's doing this ultrasound and we're seeing this baby that's like six months along or whatever. And so I asked her, I was like, so how's it work? Is this like when you, when your wife's like eating like a hamburger or something, does the baby just like pick it up and start eating the food or let's say <laughs> like, what the fuck? And this fucking nurse <laughs> looked at me like <laughs> this dude is a complete, idiot. <laughs> complete idiot, and she's like, she's like, no, there, 
there is an umbilical cord and that is feeding it. I'm like, so the hamburgers just like land down into like a kind of some type of a filtration system or what? <laughs> so I'm going to keep asking her about hamburgers and how the baby has to pick up the hamburgers <laughs> inside the stomach as if I think babies are growing inside the fucking stomach walls. <laughs> That's actually really. It was funny, awesome. Dude. It That's was like, awesome. and I sold this shit so cleanly, and my wife was just like, she turns to the nurse and she's like, "Please don't listen to this idiot." Yeah, right. Like, right. just let None him. This is like, real. this is not like he's he he this needs is how like he a deals with stress. Yeah, this is, like this is how he. This is how he's like. This is how he, this is how he's like, stress, yeah. You know, coped with the modern world because mm-hmm. he's a fucking retard. So yeah, because he's a fucking retard. yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Dude, the picture of the baby picking up the hamburger. Right? It is. That it's hilarious. Hit, that, that killed me. It's hilarious. <laughs> and then I think there's a baby in the stomach in with the all stomach. the acid just like chilling in there, Hanging picking. Like, how's this work? Looking does the baby up. just pick up the what, food out of the stomach? What's coming next? Yeah, what yeah. What do we got next? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I fucking oh love it. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. I've had some really good ones. I, I uh, We were checking out a Shields the other day, and... You know they're they're ringing us up, and you know how like every attend uh, every like checker out or mm-hmm. what, what do they call what do they call this person the, the whatever the person that's checking you out right and they're scanning shit and they're just like they're looking out into space. There's like no emotion whatsoever in their face. Yeah. And they're just like, "Hi, did you guys find everything okay? Okay." What are you guys up to tonight or this weekend? You know, they're just kind of like going through the whole just thing because it's like a thousand people they have to yeah. do. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, we're, we're grabbing a bunch of tarps and lube. We're going to have a big orgy at the house. Like, it's called a key party. It's like you basically you invite a bunch of people over, you throw a bunch of stuff in there. And I'm just like going into like a level of detail around this like fictional event. And she didn't. It breaks her out of her loop, and she's like, starts to look at me. I was like, "Hi, hey, what are you doing tonight?" Yeah, and she's yeah. just like, "Oh my god, <laughs> I'm busy," you know. But she's looking at me like, "Okay, great, have a great day." And my wife's just like, "Fuck, dude, please stop." And I'm like, "No, man, like I, I will stop when I die. That's please, when I stop. Please stop. Please she's stop. You. <laughs> please stop. For the love of God, please stop." Which makes you want to do it more. Yeah, which makes you want to do it. More. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't. She You're she's much braver than I am. I I I. Molly I couldn't, throw down on you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm big. How old are your kids uh, now? Twelve. Uh, twelve and eight. Almost mm. thirteen and eight. Oh, how's that? Um, you've been through it already. The teenage years. But it's, not all of them. Yeah. I wasn't there for it, but yeah. 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 <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's interesting. There's a lot of emotion. And there's a lot of talking and wanting to get stuff off her chest. And really? Yeah, like really wants to, like, you know, lots of feelings, which is good once you get older and you can yeah, deal yeah. with those things. You know, I mean, not to not to bring the mood of the podcast hmm. down, but, re- I mean, seriously, it's like, it's, um, I mean, she's a pretty amazing girl, but I can see how the teenage years are very challenging for yeah. girls. Especially in you know this time of social media, Dude. which we don't do, but in the, these times, man, do they have a? Do, does she have a phone? She does. Yeah, and, um, but she doesn't have access to social media. She or does anything? not. Yeah, yeah. She does not, and we have it pretty locked down. Yeah, and she thinks we have it more locked down than we actually do. Ah, solid. You know. Yeah. Um, but some of her friends are just cleared hot. On TikTok and yeah. whatever's and Snapchat and we whatever. Do, yeah, we we're kind of. Are you guys uh, are you guys open internet like social media stuff like you guys do? No, that I mean I can't speak for for my oldest because like I said I wasn't really there. Well, she's like eighteen. Now, she's right? eighteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the, the the middle one, middle girl, she's got a phone. It's not locked down tight. It probably needs to be locked down tighter. It's almost like maybe that ship has already sailed, but there's no. No social media accounts. You, you know can't I mean? unring the bell, right? Yeah, you can't un- unring the bell. And then the boy, uh, uh-uh, he's he's <laughs> yeah, I, he's I, wild. He's a wild ride. If we can, he's a wild ride. Never have a phone. Yeah, if I can get. A I don't know if that if he should ever oh, have a driver's have, license. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 You know, yeah. he yeah. might be a danger to himself and others. <laughs> what did your wife say? He just needs to go straight from your house 
right into the Marine Corps. You know what uh, I mean? Like pipeline him. So he says. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How old is he? Nine. Nine. Yeah. He's fun. He's a fucking super cool kid. Definitely keeps definitely keeps the wife on her on her toes. Yeah. But he was like he just walked into the house, right? You guys were staying yep. next to us, and he just like cruises into the house, and he starts like raiding the fridge, probably. No, he's like home. bashing something, right? And this is like the difference between boys and girls. Yeah. Whereas, like, he just starts breaking something. He's just like <laughs> bashing it into pieces. You know, it's like, hey, uh, my wife doesn't know who she this kid is. is. No, he That's just right. walked in the front door and started breaking some shit in the in the kitchen or whatever, right? Yeah. You know, and I was just sitting in the living room, like texting or doing right. something. You know, and he he was like breaking something of non non-consequence right yeah <clears throat> and my wife was like yo do you know this kid and i was like oh yeah yeah he's yeah. digging digging yeah. son she's like yeah. are you gonna stop him from like breaking shit in our house i was like nah he's a kid no i'm let afraid him, nah, i don't want to stop him i don't want to put a brakes on that train you know what i mean yeah, he's fun yeah he's he's all boy that's for sure yeah, that's cool yeah. but that's the difference between boys and girls and it's such a distinct difference because mm. our house is clean mm -hmm. and it's quiet and like my girls and I were like this is a great example last night we I had all my kids and my my wife's been out of town but we we had we had um all my kids in my office like in the house mm -hmm. and my youngest and I were putting together a 500 piece puzzle my oldest was drawing and we were listening yeah. to classical music mm -hmm. until they went to bed yeah nope that doesn't happen if no. you got boys. Yeah. There's no, there's yeah. no, there's no planet. I mean, literally that exact scene happened in my house about ten days ago. <laughs> the exact, <laughs> except I think the puzzle and the drawing were inverted. The oldest was yeah, doing yeah. the puzzle with me. It's girls, crazy. yeah, girls. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, we had a boy in our house from the like the neighbors pretty open. Yeah. They just come in and out. The same boy walks in. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not yours. It's any boy around yeah. that age. Mm -hmm. They like just try to try to pull the ears off our dog. Wow, what, yeah. do these ears come off? Yeah. Let's see if these ears come off. I don't know, man. Like, Murder, seems death, cool. Kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Let's break this. Let's kill this. Like, yeah, yeah. Know, fucking, this is cool. Yeah, my wife's always like, "What? Why?" I'm like, "You're, you're, it's, it's tea. It's just tea." There's an old like you can't imagine the amount of testosterone like even at that age. Oh yeah, that's right. you world's know. greatest drug. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. It's, what about your kids? How are they doing? They're rad. My yeah. my kids are super fun. Like I I have a blast with them. Like yeah, they're fun. I I can't wait to spend. Uh, when are we gonna want? I, like I I can't wait to spend more time with them. Like yeah. I, I've I announced in my earnings call, but I'm moving to the chair, and so okay. Wow, uh, I'm gonna be able to spend like soup, uh, a, a lot of time focused on the brand and doing some other shit. But congratulations! Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm moving to executive chair role, which is gonna be awesome. Uh, what does that mean? Um, it means that I might be able to like coach a fucking soccer team. Yeah, like, that would right? be cool, right? Yeah, yeah, that'd be yeah, and awesome. uh, it just means like when, when your signature is on everything in the company and you have like a lot of technical and specified tasks. You have a lot of what, what I would say is duty bound responsibilities that are like day to day to day to day, right? You you have to do them, mm -hmm. and there reaches a certain point where you can find somebody that's more competent than you are at the position. Mm -hmm. So it allows me to go to the chair. I can focus on brand specific things like strategic partnerships and relationships, and I don't have the day-to-day -day blocking and tackling of the direct yeah. reports that need to need to kind of happen from the company's perspective. So I, I wanted to do this a couple of years ago. Like, but we were like, okay, we're going to take the company public. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to transition, you know, cl transition. I wanted to transition. Mm -hmm. I want to transition out into, and not out, because I'm, I'm, I'm taking over what's called the founder role in the company, which is... It's still, I'm still an executive in the company. I'm still the executive chair on the okay. board, but it just allows me to like deeply focus on like the the customer promise, which it sounds corporate-y. okay. But when you really look at it, it's like I can go in and start to look at 
which farmers are we actually working with in South America? I can right. spend like, you know, weeks if I want to in Nicaragua, El Salvador, you know, Panama and Brazil. I can like be intimately tied to the success of their farming operations. Mm-hmm. I can be, I can't do that right now. I, right. I, I can't yeah. go to, you know, Panama and spend two weeks with a farmer right. like trying to figure out, you know, how do we, you know, build a, it, it and th- there's, there's, there's part of this, and once again, I don't care. Like it's like it's about doing the right thing versus doing the wrong thing, right? It's like I'm very interested in how we can provide sustainable long-term employment for farmers, for mm-hmm. instance. Um, and I, I think of that in the in the context of like we have a national security issue in the border. If I can provide economic incentives, education, you know, long-term, sustainable, high-growth profitability for these farmers that we're working with, I can employ more people even in South America, which ultimately, yeah, man, I get it. I'm one drop in the bucket, but I believe in this circumstance where it's like, if not who, but me, right? It's like, don't ask, right. just fucking go do it. Do it. And I, I mean, I love coffee, and, and it's like obvious, but um, I'll be able to do things like that. I'll be able to like, you know, build... Uh, a, a system around what my ethos is as far as like founder based initiatives. Yeah. And we're giving millions of dollars back to these nonprofits. I want to be able to, I've never been to like my like Clint, Clint trial and I were just talking about this. Yeah. Third option just did a, a thing in DC and I've, this is the third year I've missed it. Right. You know, special operations warrior foundation mm-hmm. every year they do something third option. Like I, I, I miss shit like all the time because yeah. there's a triage and a prioritization of work. Mm-hmm. So now I just get to like really hyper focus on the things I'm very passionate about and can provide exceptional value at. That's awesome. It is. Yeah. So I, I, I get to fuck spend more time with them too. Yeah, I love it. And that mm-hmm. means more time with, I mean, more importantly with us. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we yeah. Get to go do shit together, well, we get so. to go and like go hunting. Right there, you go. Like, yeah. Did you guys go hunting this year? Not yeah, yet. negative, right? Yeah, I've been on the Not road this year. Mm-mm. I've been on the road. We did Europe yeah. and. Oh yeah, how was that? It was great. How long were you guys over there? Oh, it was like eight days, nine days, something like that. It Where'd was you a guys gra- go? It was a gra- France and then uh, uh, England, and we. Uh, it was a graduation present um, to my oldest. Because she wasn't going to go in the service, obviously we never pushed that. So I wanted yeah, to yeah. get a little overseas travel to just kind of, right. you know, hopefully plant that seed. That how'd she do? Yeah, she did. She, yeah, did she, she think it was cool? She did great. I, I, yeah, she did great. I mean, it was the first time I think I ever. She's, you know, obviously probably going to throw a fit when she listens to this. <laughs> I think that was the first time I kind of realized how integrated like that generation is into their phone yeah you know what i mean yeah, like right. in, in, in the whole instagram and, and tiktok or facebook or whatever you know like i'm trying to you want to manage expectations right as soon as you start thinking like a person should respond in a certain way i think you've you set yourself up for disappointment so to speak so you, you couldn't have chained me to a radiator if i was 18 years old and my parents were like hey i'm gonna take you to you know france and, and whatever and i'm not saying in any stretch of the imagination that she was unappreciative. You're just kind of constantly looking, you know, and she's like, yeah, this place is cool. You know what I mean? Right. You know, TikTok yeah, yeah. Or Snapchat, you know, wanting to take pictures and, you know, um, like we went to Stonehenge and she's like, what's up with these rocks? <laughs> <laughs> Solid. You know? Yeah. So we took like two yeah. laps around it and she's like, is that it? I was like, oh, man. Dude, I think that's 18 though. Yeah. I, I was about I, to I, say I, it. I was, yeah. I was that yeah. way when I was 18. I remember that. Like my dad tried to like turn me on to stuff or whatever. Like, like check this out. I'm like, fucking lame, dude. Yeah, whatever. I want to go to a party with my friends on the <laughs> right. beach. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had a fantastic time. Um, we had a fantastic time, and I don't regret it in the least. Um, I'd no. never been to France, you know, so it was. I had a great. What'd time. What'd you think? What'd you think? I mean, because it gets a it gets a rap. I'm not going to say bad or negative or positive, but it gets a rap. Like, did you yeah, have a negative or positive experience? I here? had a positive experience. Um, it was a lot cleaner than I thought it was going to be. You right. Know? Um, yeah, I I, I I thought it was fantastic. It wasn't. A, it was like four and a half days in each place, right? So that's not almost not enough time. No. You know, with the jet lag and the so on and so forth, um, you know, took the train from from France to London, and that was the first time I'd ever been on a bullet train like that, and that was That's that cool. was pretty rad. That's cool. You know, yeah. Is it, it comfy? Like, 
Like, I mean, because you're doing 100 miles an hour, right? Like, Two. 200 Two. miles an hour. Shut the fuck up. It's like 197. Seriously? Or yeah. And it's comfy. No, yeah, I mean, no we, issues. We spent the whole time in the drink cart, so Solid. yeah, we were yeah. super comfy. Super comfy. <laughs> yeah, that's great. But uh, yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, yeah. My my favorite thing from that trip from you was when you I think you texted both of us and you you had your daughter was like had been to Europe and all that and was so impressed and or not impressed and was so excited about the tiny toothbrush on the airplane on the oh train. yeah yeah, yeah. You she know. got a super. Super like, kick this is of awesome. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. You're okay. like, yeah, I just bought you a trip to Europe. Best and, part of the whole know, trip. Exactly. Sick. Single serving toothbrush. <laughs> hey, <laughs> She's you know gonna what? She's going to kill me when I get home. No. God, she no. will, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what, what, have you gone? You've been to France, right? Yeah. Yeah. Did you yeah. take your current no. wife or do you go with some other romantic fling that no. you had? I was, I'm... I'm old, so I deployed to Sakir a lot. Oh, so, shit, yeah. So we would go to Paris for the weekends and stuff. Oh, like, yeah. Like take a train over and everything. So I've always had super positive experiences there. Um, the Parisians have always been very nice. Yeah. Which I, you know, might be an unpopular opinion, but always very nice. Not so, in a hurry. Not like, in a hurry. That was the biggest yeah. con. Like, we're in yeah. such a hurry all the time. Yeah. But you're, you were there in the summertime, right? Or like a month ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I used to fly in and out. Oh, okay. Going to, I, I worked in like Senegal and Botswana and right. a few of these other places. So I'd fly in and out of Paris and I, I, I had a, I had like an exceedingly high experience in France. Yeah. So I've never quite understood. Me neither. The negative rhetoric mm-hmm. around no, I'm, I'm I'm right there with you. Yeah, yeah. Like I get it. Paris is a big city, yeah. right? Okay, whatever. It's a big city, just like every other big city. That's kind right. of a pile of yeah, shit. Yeah, they don't have like, time to give you directions. No. Figure it out. Figure it out. Yeah. But I've I had like really, really a fantastic experience yeah. in all those locations. Yeah, like, me too. Like all over, all over Europe. Like Italy mm-hmm. was amazing. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you know, we travel for work all the time, mm-hmm. but. Um, I went to I went to Italy for a month, and um, just kind of traveled around. And mm-hmm. then I went to uh, Croatia and Bosnia. Yeah, and we took the ferry Gorgeous. across the Adriatic, and um, mm-hmm. it's 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 amazing. Like yeah. people are super friendly. Like you know, I take taxis or whatever. And I mean, I was doing it on a shoestring. I was, yeah. I was you know E six Evan at the time. It wasn't like I was like big baller. I was mm-hmm. like totally living like off you know, a couple hundred bucks or whatever. It's just it's awesome, yeah. man. Like <clears throat> Europe's an incredible experience. I mean, depending on how you do it, but yeah, I've never understood that. I think partly is because I'm not obese too, which is like <laughs> sincerely, right? It's like, yeah. you know, you're not cruising around with like a Mick, you know, a, a Mickey Mouse shirt and a fucking, you know, right. in, in a, in a, in a, in a, 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 a uh, Oakland A's giant raincoat <laughs> with like cargo shorts and white shoes, and you weigh six hundred pounds. Rascal. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. hey, man, you know. And uh, yeah. I, I think, uh, even my dad. My dad's redneck as fuck, right? He's a yeah. logger. He yeah. he went. He had a fucking great time. Did he? Yeah, dude, yeah. he had a great time. Yeah, I'm of the opinion that if it's new, you know what I mean. If it's a new place that I've never been, I, mm-hmm. I can't help but have a good time just because it's a new experience. You know what I mean? Like, I may never go back to France ever again. So yeah. I, the whole time, that was what was kind of going through my Rolodex was like, take it all in, try and be as present as possible, have a good time, no matter what, because you may never come back here ever again. You know, so <clears throat> I would, I would go back in a heartbeat. Yeah, you know, it's great. Yeah, so. Something you said made me start thinking about what was it? I forgot. But anyway, it made me start thinking like, what would you guys do? Like, what would you have done if you didn't start this place? Mm, interesting. Um, I would. I would still be in coffee. Like that was always you my think? yeah. That was always yeah. my plan. I'd still be in coffee. So I'd have mm-hmm. like a coffee shop. I mean, this place. To be fair. <laughs> Like, yeah, I would I would just have and the original concept was to have a bougie high end gun store that's also like a, 
you know, cool like coffee, coffee shop, shop with like le- leather lounge chairs yeah. and like like a John Wick coffee shop. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you you see yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, I I would just I would have a coffee shop, like I would be roasting coffee, you know, twelve kilos at a time, yeah, like pulling shots and managing a coffee shop. Like that's what exactly what I do. Do you kind of do you kind of miss that part of this business when? when you were in your garage and I know those were some super stressful times, mm. but do you kind of miss that part no. of it a little bit? No, Mm-mm, no. Cause it, yeah. I get super happy. I, my kids and I come in for those of you on Saturdays, typically like I'm here and I'm pulling shots in the morning to, depending on the Saturday. Yeah. And my kids will be running around in the shop and it's I'll fantastic. pull, I'll be pulling shots, talking yeah. to customers and like basically what you wanted to do. That's what I like. Yeah. I, I like working, you know, I like being in a social environment where you're part of the community, where your kids can be integrated into it with, yeah. you know, people that you enjoy being around. And that, I, I, I truly like, like behind the espresso machine, like, or, you know, in the roaster or something like that. Like I like making stuff. I really like making stuff. It's super yeah. fun. But the big thing is like, when my kids are, you know, eating donuts in the coffee shop and like running around, I got fucking dogs and kids and right. shots and, you know, the clink of, of the coffee mugs and the sound of the steamer with the music in the background and the kids and dogs and yeah. people yeah. talking like yep. the social connection that you get from yeah. the coffee shop translates through our DNA and quite literally through hundreds of years of, being caffeinated and then the first thing you want to do once you're caffeinated most of the time is like put pen to paper or start running your fucking mouth yeah or start talking yeah yeah Yeah. you get motivated man it's energy right yeah what would you do i'd probably start a outdoor company called nomadic research called Called nomadic Nomadic research Research. yeah that's probably exactly (laughs) what i do (laughs) that's a good segue yeah 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 yeah. unplanned but yeah yeah so basically dagan and i started this company called nomadic research i don't want to get into it too much we've talked so much but you know it's an outdoor brand we make jackets we have these amazing jackets we make backpacks we make all of these really great things that you can use in the outdoors and then and i mean the outdoors is amazing you know it's a church for all of us yeah and Mm -hmm. uh it's a good way to put it yeah but the big thing is is that you know i just encourage people to go to the website check us out nomadicresearch.com we're Mm -hmm. on the instagram you know all of our stuff is developed in america you know we 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 really push making quality gear, making stuff that works for our consumer, the best gear. Now it is made overseas. Most of it's made in Vietnam because Vietnam has the finest manufacturing in the world right now. And, um, you know, would we like to make it here in America? Yeah, we would, but we're not there yet. It's, it's also very cost. It's, I would say it's also skill and then it's cost prohibitive to where, you know, as a small business, you it also is. have to be cost sensitive because, yeah, sure, you could probably make that jacket in America. It might cost you a thousand dollars at the consumer level right. to purchase it, or could it be, you know, exactly. grounded in reality where you can have, you know, high performance gear that's you know developed by, you know, vets and former special right. operations guys that kind of know a few things about gear the way it needs to fit, and. I mean, we've known each other for a long time and you, you know, you're detail oriented. You're thinking about things like you're, you're thinking about the way the zipper flows and yeah. you know, all these different little things. And it's like developed by you guys. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty fucking epic. Yeah. And it's one of the things when we talk about the manufacturing to kind of double down on what you were talking about is, is well, it's either that or nothing. Right. So do you want to start a company and, and try to help, you know, other vets and, and people or do nothing? So we chose to do something. Mm-hmm. Our third party distributor is a uh, ex team guy, mm-hmm. ex Navy SEAL. He's got a company called Industry Threadworks. They do amazing for us. Distribution, just amazing. And, um, 
you know, we've got a small line of products right now. We have a backpack. We have an everyday carry pack. We've got a great travel bag. We have these jackets and we have accessories. And we're really next year going to really start focusing on really looking into like the travel side of things, right. you know, our name's yeah. nomadic research. So let's be nomadic. Mm -hmm. So we're going to really start developing, um, you know, a suite of travel bags and gear and we love our customers. We love feedback. So, you know, hit us up on Instagram, follow us, let us know what's going on. It's great. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, as a consumer of the product, like, you know, I mean, I'm, I still, we developed with you guys that, um, tote yep. a couple years ago. I mean, I came in today. That wasn't just for your benefit. Like, <laughs> like, dude, I threw a bunch of stuff in it. It was like, sometimes like my, yeah, that was my, cool to see you walk in carrying our bag. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. I could just like, you throw a bunch of shit in it. Like we have them all around the house. So my wife uses them all the time. They like go in the back of the car. They're, they're just going everywhere. Yeah. We use them all the time. Bags yeah. All the yeah. Time. No, yeah we, we take like yeah. four to the beach, you know? So. Dude, it's such a convenient, piece of kit yeah and you know i know I, I see them all the time in here it's like if you walk through the offices you'll see those bags mm. probably in just about every other office because people use a shit oh yeah was, we saw three just out in that mm -hmm. that um, outer room there yeah so when you when it's being used yeah all the time by everybody around you you're like you ah right. yeah you did yeah. something right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Well, we're very excited. You know, we've been around a couple of years and this is our year. Right. You know, the, I, I think that, you know, we're really going to try to expand things. We're going to get out there. We were talking to your um, marketing, some of your marketing people, and uh, we're just super, super pumped up, man. Yeah. Let's go. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited yeah. for you guys. Like, it's, it's fucking cool. Yeah, it's cool to it's see fun. guys transition. I mean, you know, and kind of getting into your backgrounds, like, you know, Matt, you can you can kind of start and give people yeah. the the yeah, background. I was, a, I was a Navy SEAL. You know, I did the it end. for yeah the end. <laughs> the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you know, I was in back in the day, and you know, back when we were wearing woodland camis and getting issued chocolate chips, That's right? Gore Tex, yeah, yeah. and spin a skinny minute and that, and then the 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 G Watt started, and I was in SEAL Team Four Reserve at the time, and. Some uh, Eric Prince, who I think just ro may have rolled through here. Yeah, yeah, he was just here. Okay, yeah. yeah. yeah Eric came by uh, one day in the uh, at Blackwater when we were on drill, and said, "Hey, we need people to go to Afghanistan to work as contractors." And I was like, "Right here, right. I'm your man," because I know I'm not going to get there at SEAL Team Four Reserve at right. this time, you know. And you know the things that kind of wound down. What year already. was that? It was like 2004. Three, I okay. Think. So it was yeah. early, yeah. Yeah, it was early, end of three, four, maybe. And um, then, so I contracted with the agency until yeah, yeah. until we met. And then, um, you know, I had my kids, and this is a familiar story to you guys. But I had my kids, and my dad was still alive at the time, and he was a fighter pilot, and he was like, man. You've been to the well so many times. You're going to come up dry one day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yep, you're right. Yeah. And, you know, and I'd been offered a job as a blue badger. Mm -hmm. and Which is a full-time person for those right. of you who aren't familiar well, with. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a GS position in uh, the agency. Yeah. So I'd been offered a position, and I was seriously considering taking it. And I just decided to walk away. Mm -hmm. I just said that's enough, and that was about a decade ago, or more, or longer actually. Was it really? Yeah, longer. Maybe. Oh, twelve. Yeah, and then yeah. I went to work for a uh, for a small company that did a lot of work for the NSA mm -hmm. called Cybex Solutions, and that was awesome. That was like working for a, I mean, getting knowledge from a fire hose. I right, mean, it was crazy. I didn't know anything. I was working with these amazing guys. And um, that's an amazing place. A lot of people give the 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 techies at the NSA a hard time, but that's 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 a pretty amazing place. And um, worked with them for a few years, and then I ran a nonprofit. I got at, I was on the board with Seal Kids, which yeah. is an existing nonprofit that exists today, which is amazing. And not just because I used to run it, but they actually they help the children of Navy Seals, right? 
So we all know that all of our kids probably have ADHD or something <laughs> because there are kids. There are kids. And, you know, the nonprofit provides help to them, and that was amazing. But I always wanted to do something for me because radical freedom, mm-hmm. right? And so I called up Dagan, and I was like, hey, let's start a company. Yeah. Let's call it Nomadic Research. Yeah. And I, and I brought him on board because cool story. I mean, I mean you know. Yeah. Well, he said, well, I said yeah. what do you need from me? He said, nothing. Nothing. I said, I'm in. <laughs> cool. Just be you. Yeah. I'm right, in. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, what's your background, Dagan? Yeah. Uh, I was a Marine um, for 12 years. Started out in Fast Company, which is fleet anti-terrorism security teams or fake-ass SEAL teams, depending on who you talk <laughs> to. Uh, I hadn't heard that in a long time. Yeah, right? I haven't either, man. That's I, I, it, It's been a long time since I've heard that reference. Yeah. It's super funny. Oh, I man. love it. Yeah, talk. It, it was a fantastic unit. Um, it's a very. It was a real good place to kind of cut your teeth because yeah. it's you know company level or Marine Corps company level assets. Um, you know in a in a forty man platoon, so you got spun up on almost everything. You know very very quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, one of my friends from high school, we graduated together. Matt Arns and he went over there early, like ninety five, ninety six ish, mm-hmm. yeah. and like. He thought it was awesome. Yeah, it, it was a fanatical unit, even for the Marine Corps. Right. You know what I mean? Um, spent some time as a sniper with 1st Battalion, 5th Marines. Taught a little while at Quantico. Um, then did the recon thing, force recon thing, and then yeah. uh, transitioned out into contracting. Right. Right around like, the 12-year mark, you know. Like, do you still shoot a lot of, like, long gun shit? Do you still do a lot of, like... <laughs> It ebbs and flows, yeah, right? Yeah. So it depends. Yeah. Like I'm in Illinois, and believe it or not, there's not a ton of places where you can get. Well, there's not a lot of high ground, right? It's right. like all flat and mm-hmm. full of trees. So when I find, you know, usually it's at work, right? You know, so as often as I can. Yeah, yeah. Which brings up your company talking about long gun stuff. Is we we developed a product at Nomadic Research that's used by the government. Um, can't really talk about it. Right. And we transitioned that into another company that Dagan runs. It's called 102250. Yeah, 102250, which is primarily consulting, training. And What's then that mean? What's 102250? The mean? articles of uh, basically Article 10, Article 22, uh, Article 50. Yeah, right? yeah. <clears throat> so a little bit of a smart. play yeah, on. Smart, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> a little bit of yeah, yeah, yeah. something to get people to go, What's that mean? What's that um, mean? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I started that, what? Two years ago, maybe, mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, just trying to keep as many irons in the fire as we can, right? right. And, yeah, you know, push forward on on everything that isn't the day job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. What do you guys when when you think back from your war experience, wars, depending on what bit? Mm-hmm. I mean, we'll just say GWAT. Like, what what are the things that you take away? Uh, I'll 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 point to dig in first like what do you take away from those things like like a positive negative just like just like talk about it for a while i, I had a very positive i had the i had a very positive experience you know and, and we talked about this last time like even in the worst of the you know air printers quote worst of it i wanted to be there so bad that was a box i wanted to check so bad that mm-hmm. it was even when it was the worst of the worst, you know, I was, yeah. I, I look back on it with fond memories, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. I mean, obviously there's parts of it that you wouldn't want to repeat and obviously friends mm-hmm. lost and so on and so forth. But I, such a roller coaster, I think of, of, of emotions from like the start, like I was in the invasion of Iraq and, you know, I was that quintessential. I don't care why we're here. I don't care. It yeah. doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like, this is just my time. I to just cool. want to do war. I just want to do my mm-hmm. job. Yeah, you know. Um, and uh, I went through. I, I would say a kind of a, a roller coaster of emotions there, where you know you you get done with that, <clears throat> and then you watch as it, you know, what do I want to say? Like, what's the objective here? You know, at, at the time the objective was to capture Baghdad, and you know, so on and so forth, and we did that. And then as it kind of, I don't know if you want to call it mission creep, but get in Fallujah and Ramadi and so on and so forth. Like, how do we define victory? I mean, Afghanistan's a perfect example. Like, just endless wars with no definition of the job is done. Right. We, we, we've won, you know. Um, so 
18, 19, 20 years old, you know, very optimistic and, you know, happy to be there, ha happy to, you know, live the suck, so to speak. And then you get over to Afghanistan. I remember being, I had never been in Afghanistan in the military and whether it was a week, a 10 days or two months, I was like, we're either going to be here for the rest of our lives and our kids and our kids' yeah. kids or we should just leave right now. Right. You know what I mean? Like, what? Yeah. Right. you know what I mean? Like, did you guys get that feeling when you were there? Because that yeah. hit me pretty, pretty quick. Mm -hmm. You know, this is never going to end, you know. Um, in that sense, I don't take any pleasure. You know, I didn't, right. that's that's not a fond. I have a lot of fond memories from my time there. I mean, four and a half, almost five years. But at the same time, how did it end? Mm -hmm. You know, not cool. The yeah. time spent there, the dudes, you know, us, you know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't ask for a better group of people to work mm -hmm. with. But the overarching, like, what what did we do? Mm. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Was it good? Was it bad? I know the ending was not awesome. No. You know, that not definitely awesome. could have gone differently. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And how soon before we're back. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? If we're not already there in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. You know? So, I don't know. That's a... It's a podcast in itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know what? What, what, do you, what do you think? What do you what do you take from it? Like, what are the what are your things that you're taking from that experience? Yeah, it's it's tough, right? Yeah, that's a tough question, man. You know, I take there's a grit. I think that we have that even like the greatest generation probably wasn't able to tap into i'm not saying they couldn't have done it but mm -hmm. you know how many years did you spend overseas evan um probably seven seven and a half yeah. i think total yeah seven yeah going outside the wire probably every day you know yeah. the wire did different different levels of yeah. danger different 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 levels of wire yeah you know, you know i spent time in colombia israel Mm -hmm. you know, right. various places in the middle of <laughs> Iraq, Afghanistan. So every time that you go, there is something that, you know, that it eats a little piece of you. Um, I really have tried to take away hope mm. because I want to be positive. I really want to be positive. It's easy to not be. It's easy to not be, and the moral, what I say, is the moral injury to all of us, the way we left Afghanistan, was unforgivable. It, fu it fucked me up for weeks. Yeah. yeah. If I, I'm yeah. sure, you know I'm what I mean? I'm not saying like, that leaving Afghanistan was the mistake, and if I have one issue with, um, I really enjoy um, Breaking Points, mm -hmm. this show with Sagar yeah, and Crystal, and Crystal and Saga, Ball. Yeah. The one problem I have with them is they always say, yeah, but he, you know, Joe Biden got us out of Afghanistan. It's like, uh, yeah, but the way he did. Way. And I don't think that people, and I'm kind of getting off track here, mm. but I don't think that people understand what it means to a warrior to leave that way mm -hmm. and the moral injury that it gave all of us. And that is unforgivable. You could have done it the right way. Mm -hmm. You could leave. You could still go the same way, but done it right. But nobody asks the veteran what the right way is. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's a um, – what I took away was a, a, a cynicism, a deep – deep rooted cynicism that I struggle with every day. But I also took away hope because, um, you know, I met some phenomenal people. I met you guys. I met friends. Um, I lost friends, but you know, I also met my wife. Yeah. And so for me, um, you know, it's you, you take away what you, and what I've, I, you know, I think to answer it, is I am struggling every day to take away good mm. from it, you know? So there's my answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very easy yeah. to be, very easy to look at it and be super cynical. And, and then it would just eat you, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It would just eat you alive, like all that time. And like you said, blood and treasure spent. Yeah. You know? Um, so, yeah, you try and focus on 
you know, the experiences, the intimate experiences with mm. teammates and, you know, right. certain jobs accomplished, you know, uh, you focus on that instead of the overarching, you know, why, yeah, what was it worth, X, Y, and Z. You know, I think all veterans from, you know, hot wars kind of kind of go through, you know, I pimp my dad for a lot of guidance, you know, kind of that, that meme, like... Because he's a Vietnam guy, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, and he's like, first time, right? You know, that meme. <laughs> yeah, where, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, yeah, first yeah time, I love that. <laughs> you know, uh, he said, yeah, you don't focus on, you know, things that are outside of your control. Yeah. We don't, you know, what we controlled and what we had our fingers on was right. We did everything. I don't want to say, you know, we're, we're not infallible, but... We tried. Yeah, it was never, you know, we didn't phone anything in, you know. Right. I have no control over the beltway mm-hmm. and the decisions that are made way outside of my quote-unquote pay grade, you know. Right. So you focus on that yeah. stuff, and then you have a positive, you know, yeah. experience. Um, if you don't, like I said, I think it would just eat you alive if you let it. Yeah. What about what about you? Uh, I think I struggle with the same things you guys, the same thing you identified, right? It's, um, you know, I was there for the invasion of Iraq, I was there for the SOFA in 2009, which is the Status of Forces Agreement. Um, I was in every main city in the country mm-hmm. over the course of the four and a half years, you know, of time on the ground. And, um, you know, the meaning, like, I think that's the problem, which is like, it's, it's, a, it, it's man's search for meaning in anything yeah. you do. And when you Victor Frankel, yeah, yeah. So when you're struggling to pinpoint meaning in your and in, in what you're doing, yeah. which is, you know, our missions were fairly defined in individually, like target to target, right? But when you don't have minimum success criteria, goals and objectives associated with long term planning, like all the things that are actually what I think are the duty and responsibility of our political establishment in order to provide to the the command ultimately and then for them to translate down into the the rest of the fighting force. I mean, I struggle with it, right? So what I've determined now is I will not take on any negative association with the the time. I yeah. won't. And it's not me avoiding it. It's, it's me trying to... Um, emphasize these positive things, which yeah. is it, what it did. I think that this, some of the single greatest things that I, I was able to take away from this is like, you would think about your life, limb and eyesight every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every day. So you, it was directly representative in everything that you did every time you did anything. It didn't matter if we were going to the airport, dude. Right. You were still thinking about whether or not an IED was going to come fucking smoking through your vehicle. <laughs> right, I don't give a right. shit who the who the hell you are. Like right. that's what you're thinking yeah, about. Or you should be. Yeah. You should be. Right. Right. So it made me very appreciative of what I have. Yeah. It it gave me a perspective, which is we're gonna die. We're all gonna die. Right. For which sure. is it's not meant to be morbid. I'm infinitely grateful for my life limb and my eyesight and i'm grateful for the opportunity to have spent years of my life thinking about my mortality and the Mm -hmm. others around me to give me what i think is proper perspective as to what's important i never miss the opportunity to hug my kids yeah i never miss the opportunity to read bedtime stories yeah i never miss the opportunity to like plug in and try to create mm-hmm. positive value for people. Yeah. I don't. I don't miss those things. And but more importantly, I also know we're one o'clock, right? Right. Yeah. The clock started when we were born. Yeah. It times out when we're dead. <laughs> and if we do not understand that like we will be turned into, you know, mm-hmm. dust eventually. And we don't live every day yeah. with the respect and the courage that I think we've been We've been given this incredible gift. And now, because of those years, I think we appreciate things yeah. differently. Like we oh, look yeah. at things, we get yep. we, we we just appreciate things differently. I, I appreciate really, really small things. My daughter climbed up on me last night and she was doing something. And she took a break and she like she just like ran over, climbed up on me. I was like, 
I was on my uh, little couch in my office. I was reading, and she just go, and she just like climbed up on my chest and and like laid on me and gave me this big hug. And I put my book down. I took my glasses mm-hmm. off, and I thought deeply about how meaningful that moment was. Yeah. Richest how, man in the world, right there. Yeah, richest man in the, the world. I'm the yeah. luckiest guy in the mm-hmm. world. There's nothing in this world that was, is more important to me, yeah. and. I there's not there's not a time there's not a z- there's zero time and context in this when I take those moments for granted and when I don't think and it's fleeting but it's it's always there which is there's a lot of dudes that don't get that opportunity mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they would trade us out in a fucking feathered oh, yeah. second to be there in that moment yeah. So I owe this moment the respect and gravity yeah. that it deserves because it's not just my hug, my fulfillment. It's mm-hmm. actually a hug that emphasizes all the other men that can't do that right mm-hmm. now. And it could be because they were killed in combat. It could be because they've had, you know, significant psychological psych, psychological or physical yeah. injury to themselves yeah. to the mm-hmm. point where they don't have the ability to do that. Mm-hmm. It could be because they're dealing with so much trauma that they decided to exit stage left early. Yep. But at, the, at that moment, I owe it to them and to myself to plug directly in and take full value. So Holy I present. will never trade... The fucking years that I that were representative every day, sometimes every yeah. second, sometimes fractions of a second, because what it did, what it did, was it made me a thousand, which is ten times what normal, but it made me a hundred percent present in the moment and right. get, to give me the respect that it deserves. Absolutely, that's what it did. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. I think it it took kind of turning the page on that for me, like because. It was such my identity, and I think that happens with a lot of us. Like, when you're spending more time over there than you're spending at home. Yeah. And yeah. <clears throat> I don't even think most guys notice that it's that it's happening because at that time in our lives, that's all we want to do, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, turning the page on that and basically be everything you just said to a T. That was then. I'm grateful for everything. I'm grateful that I'm still here with all my fingers and all my toes and so on and mm-hmm. so forth. You know, um, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. But it's turning that page, right? And I, I did this other podcast where they're like, "What, well, you know, what advice would you have to other veterans that are struggling with X, Y, and Z?" And I said, "I'm probably going to get shit for saying this, but you just want to grab some of those dudes that are really struggling and like just grab them by the face and go, y- you've already been through the worst of the worst, mm. right? Like, if you can make it through what's given you this trauma." and focus on what you have in front of you right now, everything else should be a breeze, right? Mm-hmm. And I know that a lot of times that's easier said than done because everybody kind of handles it a different way. But if you could just focus on the time you have left, which isn't long, you know? No. Might it's not, not be, dude. Right? We're, 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 we're halfway, some of us, more mm-hmm. than halfway over yeah. at this fucking ride. Dude. Yeah, if we make it to the, you know, yeah. the air fingers cool end, you yeah. know, like, man, stop. Stop dwelling on what it was. Just be thankful for what you have right now, mm-hmm. you know? But, like I said, easier said than done. Yeah, and to kind of what I was thinking about when you were sharing there was the one thing that my wife has taught me is, well, the one thing, just one. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, of the myriad of things that I've learned, she likes to say recovery is everything. And if I could stress to anybody listening to this who struggles to be present and maybe yelled at their kid, Mm -hmm. you know, don't go down a dark hole and be hard on yourself. Just next time, be present, you know, be, be positive. Don't get negative. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that, that to me is like, because it's a, it's a struggle for some guys to even get, in, you know, there at all. Mm-hmm. You know, they yell at their kid all day long, and it's not because they don't love their kid. It's because they're hurting, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's that, It's always running in the background, right? It's, it's always, running, always in the background. running in the background. Yeah. Um, 
I can remember my father saying that. He's like, there's not a day that goes by where a smell, a certain sight, you know, a song, it doesn't, you know, it's always just kind of running in the background. Mm-hmm. And if you, you can't push it away, but make sure it doesn't, you know, the volume of the background yeah. doesn't, you know, fully distract mm-hmm. from, you know, the present. But it's the thing that you talked about um, last podcast, I think, or maybe we were just sitting around talking, was is it's it's about being positive, you know? Don't be negative, you know? The positive that. fuel. That's <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's like my, my whole thing yeah. is like I, I, I'm just not going to – I was thinking about this, like I've thought about this a lot, which is um, I'm not a rhetoric monger brokering and hyperbole Mm -hmm. like like i'm i'm only putting positive fuel out into the world from Mm -hmm. this point forward in my life which is yeah i might rant about politicians or whatever i mean that's an easy (laughs) flogging position for us to take because at the end of the day most of them are incompetent and blah 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 like i can go on but i'm just not in the business of of doing things that are not going to directly plug in in a positive way yeah I love that. I think a lot of guys, they struggle. Like I've really been thinking about this a lot the last couple of weeks is like, is uh, purpose is everything. Like I, we were talking about this. So it's like, you know, this is man's search for meaning, but mm-hmm. purpose is everything. So in the military, you have a mission. You purpose have, is the meaning. It is. It. You, you, yeah. you, everything's laid out. Yeah. Like you're, you're in a long-term contract your destiny is determined by other people. Your purpose is spelt out through mission. You have a connected tribe of people with shared experience. You have, you know, selections for a lot of us. So now we have a a tribe of mm-hmm. people that are mm-hmm. directly aligned, mission and purpose. It is individually and collectively defined and ultimately lay, laid out for us. It is. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Now, fast forward, and I'll t- I'll give this in the in the circumstance of a guy that gets injured. So you get in a gunfight or an IED, you get blown up. Now you're removed from your tribe. Yeah. Yep. Your mission, your purpose has been taken away from you. And now your 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 physical your capability your capabilities, to do the mission. Yeah, your capa- robbed forever. So yeah. your tribe, your identity, your purpose, everything is taken away. Mm-hmm. And the expectation is that the VA is going to prescribe you something that's going Fuck. to fucking refill that. It ain't going to happen. I'm just telling you it's not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So where people, and I think where, where we have to backfill on these things is by saying, okay, well, how do we interconnect with a new tribe, so to speak? How do we f- redefine ourselves and determine how mm-hmm. we're going to represent, how, how we're going to show up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And... You know, for guys that just retire or get out or whatever it is, like, like they're they're struggling with defining their purpose and and regaining yeah. control over what they're doing because A new identity, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's everything, dude. Yeah. If you don't have and if you can't define your purpose, you're gonna have a hard time. I don't care who you are, you're gonna have yeah. a hard time with anything. Like it's it's like that's kind of the the the, the thing that we got to do. Yeah. I think one of the most epiphical ways it was ever put to me was all the things that you everything that was your identity all the training all you know the 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 t-shirts the you know everything that all the cool guy clubs and the selections pass and all that that served you at a certain time because it needed to right and now that you don't have that or need that you have to find something else that serves you now currently Mm -hmm. in the present like that was your identity then, it'll never go away. But you can have a new identity. You mm-hmm. can have a new purpose. You can have, you know, uh, and find things that yeah. serve you well. I think he said, he goes, if you died tomorrow, what would your tombstone say? And I was like, that's a tough question. You know, yeah. like, he's like, yeah, I would say, you know, Marine Corps, sniper, recon, yeah, yeah, all this yeah. badass, whatever, father, husband. He goes, but you're not going to die tomorrow. What could it say? Right. You know, yeah. author, poet, whatever, you know, you yeah, CEO, yeah. the yeah, company, yeah. you know, whatever, whatever, right? Yeah. Like, what's your, what's the next objective? And if you have the next objective, yeah, we take all the things that made us who we were and apply them, you know, to the civilian 
context, so to speak. And I yeah. think I think that serves people well. And it's like purpose. Purpose is everything, like, like you said. And it it, it kind of makes me realize is when you look at a lot of the guys that aren't doing well, a lot of times they have this like false bravado, yeah, or this false ego. And you know, I'm not going to work at Home Depot or whatever. And it's like, well, you know, be open. That's what I tell a lot of people. Be open. I have, for years, I had people reaching out to me who wanted to be my friends, who wanted to, like, help me. And I just, big wall. Yeah. You know? Just, no, I'm not interested. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not interested. Because, A, you're not part of my tribe. Right. And then them looking at me were probably asking, yeah, but where is your tribe? Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't see anybody around you. You don't have any friends. Like, what's going on, you know? And it, so, it, and it's also hard yeah. because guys look at us, and it's hard just to be right rifleman snuffy, right? Because they're looking at Matt going, like, he was a SEAL. He needs to be the leader of this new group or whatever. Right, and you're right. like, dude, I'm just here to learn. Like, yeah. Right. I, yeah. I just want a window lick. Like, that's what mm-hmm. I want to do. Right. Can I just be a window licker on this ride? But no, it's it's... So there's, like... Yeah, for sure. An yeah, expectation I've, I've that, yeah. that, you know, you're going to come down off the mountain and deliver the the stone tablets of knowledge to people. And you're like, dude, I'm trying to figure it out myself, yeah, man. Yeah. Like, The only thing yeah. I know for I'm, sure is I don't know shit. I'm, I'm barely making it. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. It's like the, 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 the stone tablets of wisdom <laughs> that have been carved in through buds. And everybody wants right. to ask you this. Like, These are the same questions everybody wants to ask expert, you, by right? The way, also. Yeah. yeah, it's like, <laughs> hey, man, what'd you learn in buds? Right. And you're like, F- I, I don't quit. I, Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing except don't quit. Don't quit. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. And to be honest, Snuffy the Rifleman knows a hell of a lot more than small unit tactics than I'll ever know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, I, was trying to, I was trying to explain this to somebody. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember who it was. I was like having this conversation around, um, you know, just what, what are the questions that every civilian wants to ask? Or they ask you, like, the first question, right? I, and I guarantee it's the same one. So I'll let you say it because you're laughing. What's the first question they they ask you? It was either what was it like? Yeah. Followed usually rapidly by, did you kill anybody? Yep, there you go. And I, First so, two rounds out of the chamber. First two yeah. rounds yep. out of the chamber. Wildly inappropriate. <laughs> Wildly yeah. inappropriate. Yeah, yeah but I, I, I got to ask that. Um, and... I will forgive him for it, but I got asked that at a party in front of a ton of people by like a ten year old kid. Yeah. My nine year old recently. My not to cut yeah. you off, my, my nine year old just asked me Yeah. Yes no, two days yeah. ago. Which for a kid it's okay. It's but okay. yeah, but yeah. anyway, go ahead. But it's like yeah. adults they do that. Oh yeah. I, I was in uh I was in a bar with a bunch of guys and like, oh, somebody's like, Oh, I was you know, a former fucking blah blah blah. Yeah. And the guy walks up to me, he's like Green Beret, huh? And I'm like, yeah. You know, yeah. Rambo movie is pretty cool. Big yeah. knife. Like, <laughs> kind of a Big knife. sweet, you know, like. Uh, yeah, he's got good abs. He's super, super hot. Yeah. How many people you kill? I was like, and he was like kind of a cheese dick either way. Yeah. He was like a trader. He was in New York. And I was like, hey, man, you know that like that's not okay, right? That's not a cool question. That's not, it's not a cool question because. Like yeah. for you to come up and just ask me that quite possibly could be some of the worst days of my life and say, Hey, I want you to remember some of the worst days in your life where you're possibly yeah. Yeah. recounting the times when your friends were fucking killed and, or that you've seen things that you're just not, yeah. not super stoked to relive every right. fucking second. He's like, Oh man, I'm sorry. Fuck, you know, and I'm like about to be one, but more. just think about it. Like I'm like, <laughs> and it's, and it's no, you know, like Hey that. man, it, it's fine. It is what it is. Yeah, it is it's what like, it, is, it just goes over and over. Yeah, we're not talking about my bench press here. No, it's like, you know, what's your fucking deadlift max? Yeah. What's your, what's your wad time? Your, your, right. your what? No, man, you're talking about like yeah. the dignity of one, the courage that it takes for, you know, a soldier to go to war. And then ultimately the, 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 the sacrifice they're making. But then on top of that, you're talking about taking human life. And by the way, it's just not something that you're going to start opening up in the downtown bar <laughs> about most of us one time. And if you are, 
come on. Yeah. Like the, yeah. you're, you're not you're not providing the depth and dexterity, the weight and significance of that event to have a flippant conversation with a random civilian about shooting yeah. somebody in a bar. Right. Right. And, 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 and we I, all signed up for it, but sure. <clears throat> and you can tell. I oh, I can tell. I don't know if you. If, I don't want to speak for you guys, but you can almost instantly tell if it's genuine curiosity or, or if they're looking to be entertained. Right. And yeah. that's the, the yeah, latter yeah. is what I cannot. They want to put a coin in the machine. Dance yeah. monkey dance. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it, it's to them. It's like the terminal list. They want to hear the terminal list live and in stereo. And you're like, right. Hey man, it's my life. You know, it's, yeah, I was explaining this to somebody. I was like, hey, so have you ever seen a, uh, like, and we have, right? So this is EMT, firefighters, and everybody else, right? So it's like you, you see things in warfare that are not okay that right. you'll never yeah. be able to delete from your hard drive. Mm -hmm. Right. One is complex urban combat scenarios. You're going to find civilians on the battlefield. Those are things that you're just not going to be okay with for mm -hmm. the term of the rest of your existence. Mm -hmm. Most people, unless you have like significant um, disconnection from your emotional reality. And, you know, I was talking to one of my friends and he had dropped a lot of bombs in a very certain area mm -hmm. and there were some uh, significant amount of collateral damage. Kids. And that was like, the thing for him was like, I have a lot of trauma around sure. mm -hmm. seeing like, and, and of course you would, like yeah. I can barely talk about it right now. So then you branch that off into being a parent, yeah, transitioning into the civilian world. And now you get to carry that little, that little fucking piece of trauma around for the rest of your life. By the way, it's no different in some circumstances is the state trooper that comes on a mass cash, yep. like Absolutely. car wreck. Yep. Like my friend, good good friend uh, that we all know was was telling me about coming up on a, uh, this is kind of the last time he, he was like part of a, uh, or he was in the state troopers where he came up on a, a tragic accident where there were fatalities and some of them were children. And there was a dead child and he's like, I can't do this anymore. Like, yeah. I got to go home. I got to be a yeah. parent. I got to be a. Yeah. And yeah. these are the expectations that I don't think the standard civilian thinks about when we're talking about service to our country and our community, the things that we have to deal with and see. And by the way, those are permanent pieces of luggage that continue to take up real estate in our heads for the rest yep. of our lives. That's our duty. That's what we sign up for. But it's it's not the fucking movies, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not the fucking movies. One of my buddies that we all know, he put it perfectly one day, and I don't know if this was him or if he was, you know, like we all do, kind of steal it from other guys when you hear a good nugget. <laughs> he goes, "Don't ever forget you're the bad guy in somebody else's story," you know, and that yeah. I probably chewed on that for a month, you know, like. Yeah, there's that's so true. much truth in that, but mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, there's the parades and <clears throat> the, you know, yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, somebody got mm -hmm. the wrong end of it. Yeah, exactly. Deserving or undeserving, it's, yeah. it's that's irrelevant. You know what I mean? You were there to do a job, but but you know, I, I think we were talking talk about this in the last one. Like I always come back to, which is a Marine Corps, Marine, Marine Corps books actually. Like like I think some of the best books on war and the effects on war are uh, the old breed, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's, it's like, I mean, that should be required reading, I think, mm -hmm. honestly, yeah. in high school for everybody. Um, yeah, I think Helmet for My Pillow, yep. mm -hmm. the old breed, and he did, uh, E.B. Sledge did another one, uh, China Marine that I just started. Oh, he did? I ago. didn't know he wrote another book. Yeah, he, and, uh, <clears throat> You're reading things and getting a perspective, and what helps, I think, me more than anything is like, oh, th they dealt with that in yeah. 1945, and he was able to not only move on but then become a success. Yeah, and then you can go thousands of years back, and you can say, okay, this person was this, this, and this. We've been able to deal with this, overcome, mm -hmm. and plug in and and live more. I think. 
like if you can't tell i'm on a fucking super high philosophy fucking rant right now <laughs> where you know it's like um the the experience of being a soldier in, in and i'm saying this in general terms not mm-hmm. like soldier sailor marine i'm just saying as a soldier as a warrior it's a significant act that forever changes you. If you choose to use it for the good, right. it yes. can make you a better person. Right. It will. And mm-hmm. that's that's you're you're hitting the nail on the head is don't get sucked in to the victim culture. Don't get sucked in. And it's it's very easy to do so because it and it doesn't even feel like you're doing it. Mm-hmm. But to stay positive, you know, let the people reach out to you, let your friends reach out, let your partners in, let your wife in, let your kids in. You know, you don't have to tell them you're sick and sad or whatever, but just be, you know, just be open, be positive. I love that, dude. And you've always been that way. What? I mean, you're sort of an asshole, but... I am. Yeah, yeah. I, I fully agree. Well, we, I mean, you've always been that way, but the the thing I always got from you was honesty. And if I ever asked you for help, you always said yes. Always. I, and I hope I'm still that way. Yeah. Like, I hope... Like, yeah. Like... Like I, I, I try to practice in the sense of like I just try to practice what what I preach. I'm not like I'm not preaching to anyone. I'm like, you know, it's it's it is what it is. Yeah. And I hate to say it is that fucking flip it, but it's like, hey man, you can either choose to to rise to the occasion, right. use these experiences to make you a better person, or you can choose to pack up your luggage full of fucking weight and have it slow you down and make you that. a miserable sack of shit. I love that. Yeah. It's it really is one or the other. Um, boy, my hair looks absolutely it, ridiculous. It looks great. You guys look could be mine. I was gonna compliment like you on your hair. Um, what you got there? So I have this thing that I've, I've started. Um, and so I, it's a I, coffee company. Yeah. This, I have this coffee company that I just started. Um, this is the myth of Sisyphus. Yeah, I see the guy that essays. Push the rock every day. Push the rock. That's where it comes from. Yeah. yeah. And as I start to kind of. I love this. This is right what we're talking about. Yeah. And. This guy is incredibly interesting. Like, so if you read the read the quote on the back, Dagan, yeah. Why don't you tell us about the myth of Sisyphus? Um. Well, I I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but I'll kind of give everybody the the Reader's Sorry. Digest version of <laughs> of it. But I, you know this this guy, he was uh, born in Algiers, Albert uh, Camus. He was born in Algiers. Uh, he rose to prominence as a French philosopher, which typically, like, when I say French philosophy, blech, it's kind of gross. Um, and then he kind of went back and forth with um, a, a friend and then ultimately in a, 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 a somewhat of a controversial enemy to him, which was John Paul Sartre. But the rolling the rock up the hill comes directly from this reference. And... It essentially, you know, give you the, the, the quick rundown, which is finding happiness and fulfillment in the most mundane, monotonous, and everyday, everyday task that might seem impossible, redundant, and boring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you find purpose and meaning in just about everything you do? Um, I love that. I man. probably. No, that was perfect. All up. I love that. Uh, like if you're working a monotonous job right now. And you're listening to this podcast, like when you go home, Google this because you can. Life is good. Is he a stoic? Life is, no, he's a he's a he's an existentialist. It's a branch of existentialism, which is absurdism. So, right, you know. It, and by the way, it, it, Sisyphus was an ancient Greek um, mythology, basically. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry. No, it's perfectly yeah. summarized. I, I think, as 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 the podcast continues to evolve, 
philosophy will only become more part of this and not from a you should have jordan peterson on oh man i'd love to could you imagine yeah. i mean you know the right people yeah i don't he's a busy guy I, I yeah so i had dinner with eric weinstein did you oh how yeah. holy moly um wow amazing so i like, like like out of all the things like that that i've afforded and not in the cost it's not like like he was introduced to me by Brian Cowan. Brian Cowan mm-hmm. is very well known, very well respected comedian. Yep. I'm super fortunate enough to call Brian Cowan my friend at this point in my life. Um, and he's incredible intellect, uh, also. Like, he's a really fucking smart guy. And I stopped in to LA after uh, hunting out in California. And he's like, hey, my buddy Eric is going to come to dinner with us. And I was like, cool, man. Like, So then go to dinner with um, Eric, Brian Callen, and my business partner, Stephen. And we all went to dinner. And so here's a guy, my business partner, Stephen, came out of private equity. Like he, He's he been my partner for seven years. Fucking super cool guy. Really, really high intellect. <clears throat> and then Eric who's PhD mathematician. So he's talking about things. And the thing I love about this conversation is like when you completely understand how fucking stupid you are, (laughs) (laughs) it's an amazing feeling because you're like, oh, Oh. got it. I need to fucking read more. Okay, got it. (laughs) Whoa, I need to read more. You know, so I left that conversation with just my ass on fire to, that's to, awesome. To just go, you know what? I don't think my brain has the capacity. I, by the way, I know my brain does not have the capacity to be <laughs> even close. But hey, but tr- but I'm gonna just gonna travel and start picking a bunch of yeah, stuff up and throwing right. in the bag, yeah. right? Um, it was it's so fascinating because he's so explaining cool. time travel, and so when you're when you're when you're talking about a guy and he is. He is a, one. He explained modern uh, physics, like what, what the evolutionary change to physics in the last, we'll call it seventy years. He right. kind of gave it to me in a nutshell. Kind of explained what's wrong with physics today, like mm-hmm. what, why, and like what's going on in the just like academia and physics. And he was talking about how you know he has this concept of um, it, which I think he's. Uh, by the way, I think he's right, which is you know our most prominent problem that we have to solve is like how do we get off the rock because we're also on mm. taking, t- taking clock the sun won't last forever i think it has two and a half billion years left to burn something like that but there is a date time stamp on this thing it could be we're gonna we're gonna kill it like humans are gonna kill the planet mm-hmm. which regardless of what you think like it could happen depending like a global nuclear war right. wouldn't be great for the environment nor would it be incredibly great for our health it could be another rock colliding with our planet. It could be like a combination of other things, right? Who knows? But he is right. That's the problem we kind of all have to confront and address, which is now we've all elevated our intellect to the point where we know for humanity this kind of can't be the last stop mm-hmm. unless we do something about it. So he's really interested in like how do you solve that problem, right? Mm. It, and he doesn't think it's through – firing rockets off into Mars, he thinks it's like, how do you develop a system where you can transport yourself essentially? Like, like a different way, like, yes. like wormholes yes. or something like yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, even though yeah, he because, was like talking about string theory, like, oh, it's like for idiots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because um, when you just and I, I would be fascinated to to mumble at him because I'm an idiot too. But like when you hear the people talk about like rockets to Mars, it's like I understand this is a generational yeah plan, and it's you know. But even if you put it in those terms, it's thousands of generations. Yeah, you know how are things going to last that long? How are we going to get there? And, and just to get up to speed would take you a thousand years or something to get to light speed right. if it to kill you with g-force so it makes sense that he is you know if somebody says hey we might need to look at a different way i'm kind of voting for that guy you know but who knows who knows yeah to be fair most of what he was talking to me about was like 
I was nodding, you know, like, wow. Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand. Yeah. yeah. Think about it like this equation. Would oh, yeah, mean? yeah. Oh, I'll yeah. just bust that out in my head yeah, real fast. Equation. Yeah, I'm just going to do what's that. What's your L press time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's, what's, what's your, your splits on that Glock, homie? <laughs> yeah. Wait, like, how are you? Yeah, like, like, what? what? Yeah. Are you yeah. using a comp, non comp? Like, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bench is yeah. basically what I would say. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. That's cool, though. You know, those yeah. are people that I think what's cool about not this podcast, but what's cool about, well, maybe for you, but what's cool about, because people can learn from you, I mean, and no. learn much from us, but um, is uh, the podcasting world is that you're afforded access to these people who you never in the past would have had access to. And this is how, in my opinion, from my tiny bit of reading that I've done, that people like the founding fathers and Socrates and the ancients were so well-rounded yeah. is because they talked to all of these people. And I think that's probably why a guy like Rogan is so well-read because he's had a classical education. He mm -hmm. has talked to thousands of, thousands of people thousands. and, you know, he's learned about farming, you know, beekeeping, physics, physics mm -hmm. math, yeah, politics, like You're being a warrior, yeah. you know, all sorts of things, you know, and you know he himself is a warrior as as far as martial arts go, so it's cool, it's cool, yeah. and you know I think that people that just kind of kind of doubling down on what you're talking about, and I kind of talking about being positive and all that. I don't know, I don't have any answers. Don't listen to me. I would say that I have an inkling to if you're struggling and you want to get better. This is going to be controversial, but well, it's not controversial, but people don't like to hear it. I would say if you're a vet or you're an anybody and you're struggling, stop drinking, start working out, and get some you know, sleep. Get some sleep. sleep. Get yeah. some sleep. Sleep's huge. You know, and uh, it's just these these small basic things. You know. Yeah. Before you start filling your you know your your bathtub with ice and spending ten minutes in ice, like concentrate on. You know, yeah. can I can I fix my diet? Can I get more sleep? Can I work right. out? Oh, and stop watching TV. Yeah, and yeah, social media. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've, I've I've all uh, but stopped watching TV like it, it, at, yeah. at all. I don't watch it. No. At I heard all. I heard it put in an excellent way the other day. It was called Media Sober. Mm. For news, no, like have you that, guys heard yeah. that? No, no, that's just, good. You know, I was flipping, I like that. Yeah, as I'm flipping through mm -hmm. Instagram or something, this guy's like, yeah, I've been media sober for two years and I don't know TV, no anything, mm -hmm. no news, no current events. He's like, I just read. Yeah. I just read books. And the first month I read eight books, which for him at the time, you know, he was like, that was a huge milestone. And then it was 20 and so on and so forth. And I didn't get a chance to watch the whole thing, but yeah, media sober, news sober, yeah. that kind of stuck out. Who, who's oh, yeah. your, who's your favorite? Philosopher? Yeah. If you had to um, pick one, uh, I don't know. I think it's hard because it, you know it's not. I, I right now I would say okay today, what who who am I reading? Kind of who am I mm -hmm. really into? Um, I mean it's Camus. Like he's, yeah, yeah. He, he he has a he has a question that I think is directly pertains to our peer group, which is there's one, and I'll, I'm going to fuck up the 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 actual question, but there's there's yet but one philosophical question to answer and that's suicide. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what he talks about. And he talks about, um, why you can't. Mm -hmm. So that's, it's not the, he's not making a case for it. He's making a case against it mm -hmm. by accepting the absurdity, which is a whole, process i've been going through which i'm it'll be the rest of my life as i go through this but you know accepting the absurdity for what it is and when i talk about like veterans transitioning out <clears throat> from their culture their tribe where their mission their purpose and philosophy their essence is essentially prescribed to them mm -hmm. it's dictated you're an indentured servant which um that's kind of what you are we all sign up to do it so you're living the warrior's path as a, a piece of equipment to the state with a defined purpose. Now, as you transition out, you're detached from your tribe and now you have to go out 
in if you've gone to war, you've also had this this intimate connection with death and mortality that 99.9% of everybody else on the planet will never be able to comprehend or relate. Right. So yeah. now you've had your purpose pre like you're defined you've got connection with your peer group and and for most of us this could be a connection deeper than our family and you're removed from that circumstance with this purpose and this experience that 99.9% of anyone on the planet won't have that provides you what I think is proper relationship with life or death. Mm -hmm. And then now you're dropped into the middle of absurdity to where things that so-called matter are a fucking brand on a handbag or the type of fucking throw pillows you have on a couch or like, and so of course we're struggling. Like we're struggling because we've seen and done things that give us, I think, proper a relationship to death and how amazing, like holding on to dear life can be, like in, in, in you know, like this amazing relationship between the balancing act between life and death. And then now you're thrown into a world of of extreme excess where there's a fucking Burger King on every corner where people care about the most ridiculous, mundane, and ridiculous things, and then absurdity, which is something that he directly addresses. Like, it's fucking absurd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when you're looking at the it's idiot... Crazy. You're looking at the idiot circus, and you're going, what's my purpose, and what the fuck is going on? Yeah. We're, we're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> what do we do? It's these, like... It, it, well, I think even if you... if you Because we all have it, everything that you're saying, and then... You deal with everyone else that doesn't have that perspective, and I, I don't almost don't want them to. Yeah. Like not you don't. There are other ways to to find that perspective than going through the crucible of combat. I think I know, um, but you you say hey, that doesn't matter, right? Like you know, like and to someone that doesn't have our experience, like what do you? What, they, they can't count. Like what the fuck? What are you talking about? Like yeah, and it's hard to tell somebody that. Hey, what you're feeling doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, and that's there's almost needs to be a better way to say it. Like, yeah, you're healthy, I'm healthy, the kids are healthy, nothing's on fire. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's it's only a problem if you make it a problem. I mean, you're yeah. you're either on fire or you're not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you on fire right now? No, okay. shit's gonna buff out. We're we're okay. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. it might not be in a minute. You know, like yeah. one, one of the guys says, "Is this gonna matter in five minutes?" or five days, mm -hmm. or five weeks, mm -hmm. or five years. And once I've assessed that, then I'll put forth the energy to fix the problem or what have you, you know. But that's yeah. without yeah. that perspective, whether you get it from, you know, reading or our experience or experiences like that we've had, I think that's, you know, like you said, people are like, what do you mean? What do you mean it doesn't matter? Well, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't. You no. just can't realize it. So are you thinking about... Like having a podcast, like a separate podcast where you just you you mm -hmm. walk through. This will be the okay. only one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's cool. This will be the only one. It's it's like really, you know, when we talk about this experience, this collective right. experience that we have, which is the global war on terror, which we're all familiar with the timelines. But now, when we think about it, if we put it in the context of of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. This is 1993. So from 73 was, I believe, the year that we right. withdrew out of Vietnam. Yeah, it sounds right. Like, like, like from a from a date circumstance, we'll just call it. You know, 73 to to 93. That's 20 years. So from 2001, we're at 95. So if we're looking at it from the Vietnam generation, we're in the 90s. Does we're that make sense? In the 90s. Yeah, because we just left. But and that but that's what I'm saying is like oh, from the I first see. time yeah, I yeah, from yeah, the yeah. first time I I went in to now like guys I gotcha. like absolutely like, so yeah from a veteran health psychology connection yeah we have to be in like information and Skillshare all the time and like telling stories yeah. and relating to each other and like pumping each other up with positivity and we have to be able to share books and yeah like. In a lot of us struggle with theology. Like I know we do. We struggle yep. with theology. We we struggle with the what I would say is organized religion, the way that it works and looks today, mm -hmm. because 
what we've seen the heinous acts of mm-hmm. both Christians right. and Muslims together and the different sects of, uh, of, of the, you know, of, of Islam. And like mm-hmm. some of us have been to Jerusalem and we've mm-hmm. been to all these different yeah. places. And we're like, I struggle with like theology just in general. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, but they're principally based, uh, ethics and morals that have been foundations of humanity for thousands of years that ultimately could become something that we can really lean our ladder against as a collection. I'm not saying like, hey, this is the answer. I'm saying no, like... you're dead on to... I'm, before I forget, Eric Weinstein's brother, oh, uh, yeah. Brett Weinstein, he says something that I think is really um, right on with this, with religion. He He says for him metaphorically false factually necessary right and i think you know That's as really you know yeah. it's like yeah these stories weren't meant to be true but the lessons of them are necessary mm-hmm. for a civilization to function mm-hmm. i think i don't know if you're familiar uh alan watts Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, he's one yeah, of my yeah. favorites and i think he does a fantastic job of that's what you know i'll put him on you know, mm-hmm. in the background when I'm kind of just chilling out, you know, nighttime on the deck, whatever, because such an interesting perspective, you know, if you're open and you can follow him, because yeah. sometimes mm-hmm. he's... He gets out there. You know, yeah. he gets way out there. Gets way out there. But he's probably one of my favorites. I think just having, like, really in-depth, complex... Yeah. Complex conversations with people and providing a depth and dexterity to things. And, like, I had a... Like in the last past year, you know, I've been able to have conversations with like rabbis and like, yeah. you know, it, mathematicians. I'm referencing him, or you know, guys like I, I had a, a great conversation with not the former SEAL that was into physics, but with, um, um, you know, people that are really involved within the physics division of like SpaceX and yeah. things like mm-hmm. that, where you're like you're talking to all these people and you're pulling in all these pieces of information, and then I'm like. I'm always trying to figure out ways where I can plug that in from a veteran perspective to how do we just give some of this back? Because I I see like a lot of guys, they just, they, they struggle with it, you know, like the mundane activity of a nine to five, like, you know, I'd go back to that Rambo scene, right. Where he's like, I used to fly helicopters Mm -hmm. and fucking be in charge of tanks and shit. I can't even work at a car wash. And you're like, what's super relatable, man. Like it is, it's like, Hey God, that's kind of fucking relatable, dude. Yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 Your, 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 your prime times in life were spent in the GWAT. And when you come out the other end, what are you qualified to do? Yeah. You know. it's what are you qualified to do? Yeah. Like, you know, it's terrifying for a man. Yeah. Or, and a woman. But, you know, I've kind of focused on the, the, the guy side. It's terrifying. Well, and, and academia is full of a, a bunch of fucking wing, wing nuts. Yeah. So it's like you make the transition out, you go into maybe academia to, to re, reclassify yourself. Well, like, how are you going to relate with a, you know, a 30 year old professor that's a Marxist that's like talking about, you know, theoretical, you know, political ideologies that they have no fucking concept as to mm-hmm. how they work because the furthest they've been out to, out of the country is because they went to fucking Paris to study some, you know, obscure fucking medieval church or something. Yeah. And you're like, fuck off. You, you yeah. don't even know what life looks like outside of this. Like, yeah. They're not wise. I guess that's no. the other thing is like when you go it for a lot of us, like if we're going to transition and go into some type of, you know, professional, uh, um, track, it's like, do you want to learn from wise people? Yeah, You, you want to learn from wise people that have had skin in the game. Yeah. That's the problem with the Academy. They don't have skin in the game. You know, the, 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 the biggest problem they have is, oh, the people might not like my paper. Right, but I can just call my friends and tell them to like my paper. <laughs> right, you know, it's like I don't know. In, in your product, right? They're a product of their environment and what they've, you know, their course or their path. And where I have a problem with it is when theirs is the only answer, or there's, you know, like I don't want to be combative right off the bat because it's like, yeah, it's easy to be. But 
hold on a minute, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, let me know when you've left the zip code. Like, if you really want to, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know, don't don't be so sure. You know, it's you're so smart, you need Velcro shoes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, you know, the most open-minded people that are supposed to be open-minded are the most closed-minded people. Like, with, yeah. like you said, no frame of reference whatsoever. Mm. Uh, yeah. And they've never, and, and I mean, this is going to sound dramatic, but it's, it's, it's true. And it's a, it's a, it's a reference reset, which is they've never faced pure evil. Mm-hmm. So they, they don't even know it exists. Right. And so that, that gives you the luxury to entertain these ideas in your head, like mm-hmm. Marcus, uh, Marxism, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah it, it sounds, sounds like it'll work. Sounds sounds great. Well, sounds and, great. and the other thing is, is like it's very heady. It's right. written from a, you know a philosophical point of view. So it's other. It's written by other academics or right. you know in, intellectual elites. Right. That's who it was. So it they are kind of gravitating towards this other pure set that they can relate to because they're like, look at they're just like me. They haven't done anything either, right? And like they're like, wow, yeah, I, yeah. Mom sent me, mom and dad sent me to Columbia University for my trust fund. Like just like them, they're just like me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like no man. Like you're part of the intellectual bourgeoisie. Like that's what you are. You're you're yeah. an elitist. Like like I think there's such an important piece that, that uh, like plugged into like wisdom, which would be the experience which mm-hmm. essentially just galvanizes all that shit together. For me, I'm like, you have to have the intellect, the education, the means in order to communicate it. But if you don't have the experience that welds all that mm-hmm. shit together, mm-hmm. yeah. you, you actually can't speak from a point of wisdom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, You can't. So it's like, how are you going to go teach fucking business school at a university if you've never gone through... Yep. The, you know Dante's yeah. Inferno, <laughs> like yeah. I mean, what was that stupid Rodney Dangerfield movie? You know, and yeah, he, yeah. he goes back and knows more <laughs> yeah. about business school because he's a businessman. <laughs> yeah, crazy yeah. idea. Yeah. You know, we're rehashing the same problem, crazy over and over again. It, it's like rinse, wash, repeat. Yeah. Rinse, and I'm wash, old repeat. enough now, fifty four, that it's like I'm seeing the same. I'm starting to see the same shit come back. You know, and the 22 year olds are like, I've got this great idea, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Oh, I remember when we tried that. Yeah. It didn't, didn't work. Didn't work. Or, you know, yeah, good luck. Uh, you know, I, I, um, do you guys watch or, or listen to Lex Friedman's podcast? Do you guys watch periodically? Yeah, periodically. Ah, it's good, man. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. um, Jared Kushner was on yeah. his oh, show not too long ago. It was really, really good. Was it? Cool. Oh my gosh. It was so good. It's like probably three and a half hours long, maybe. Yeah. It was so good because there's so many people from the Trump administration that just get beat up and there's this 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 propaganda that's put out about mm-hmm. you know him or whomever yeah. on mainstream media and it's like now you have three and a half hours to listen to him on uh, with Lex Friedman. Like I would highly recommend going and listening to that if 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 yeah, you, well, if you I'll have listen the time because it's fucking awesome, man. Like the I guy, love how Lex Friedman is relentlessly positive. He's relentlessly positive. Yeah, sorry, I interrupted. You're right. Uh, yeah. No, I, I love yeah. it too. You didn't. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I truly think that, that that we just need more of those people. We need more people out there that are relentlessly positive. That are like, hey, like, just just praying for everybody around me. Like, yeah. we're gonna get through this. Not. Yep. This is what like. This is my team. Yeah. Be weary of the man that has all the answers, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Which none of us have. We <laughs> no. sit here and try to yeah, talk yeah. it out, but we don't know. No, we don't. You know? know, and you know, hopefully that comes across that we're not saying we have the answers. We're just trying. I think that's the thing, is like like, like this 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 has to be a forum of of uh you know, where we can clearly communicate and have conversations around things that mm-hmm. we're dealing with and know that we're all kind of in it together, Phil. Right. Mm-hmm. Like we are. Yeah. Like we're all struggling with the same issues. Like we're struggling with the uh, negative psychological impacts of the withdrawal out of or the lack of organized withdrawal out of Afghanistan. Right. We're struggling as we start to move up in age, you know, with like what we used to do in our previous life and maybe some injuries now. We're struggling with the loss of our friends. We're struggling with all these different things. But at the end of the day, we're fucking all in it together. That's right. We are. Like, yep. And I, I, I just refuse to be 
to buy into this this landscape of gaslighting to the point of which sure we could go out and we could regurgitate a bunch of like political talking points and whatever who cares right. that's fucking weakness it doesn't take courage to do that and yeah i'm not gonna fucking do it i mean it, it would be disingenuous to our entire lives that we've lived to do that yeah. if anything we should be seeking the opportunities just to fucking cause some cause a little bit of scruffle yeah <laughs> well, well, yeah i don't i don't bring anybody their slippers you know what i mean like i don't subscribe to any particular team you know i don't right. think there's and that's i don't bring anybody their slippers like that. God, God, you always have these Doesn't fucking the things <laughs> like what was the other one that he threw out oh yeah he's, he's, he's like he's so off, he's dude. so intelligent he uses velcro what was the velcro you're shoes so thing? smart you need velcro <laughs> shoes yeah. there's no gas in it you know what i mean like god damn you're smart as fuck you know what i mean but uh yeah, I don't like this A team and B team or red and blue. And obviously, like, there's obviously certain things that people align with, right? But, you know, show me one of them that would piss on you if you're on fire unless you were standing in line to vote. Yeah. And you can change my mind. Right. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like, so yeah. it's when people start talking, like, I hate talking politics. Although in my off time, that's usually what I listen to is political talk radio just to. If I can't watch the get news, angry. I'm at least going to listen. You know? <laughs> get angry. Just yeah, get, angry. get angry. I'm not raging enough today. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you can instantly tell when somebody is just regurgitating talking points mm-hmm. from whatever political pundit or whatever. And, you know, like, just just say you, you're obviously entitled to your opinion. That's part of being American. Yeah. But at least admit the fact that you're none of it's original thought. Yeah. You know, you're just regurgitating what, you know, you've mm-hmm. heard from – whoever it is, wherever you get most of your, your shit from. And I just think it, a lot of times, other than fun with people of mutual respect, yeah. like it, oh, what a waste of time. What you a, know what I mean? One, and all the respect in the world that guys have it figured out, by the way, like they got it figured out, they got their shit together. They got their, their, yeah. their shit wire tight, dude. Yeah. All the respect in the world, man. Like, like, I'm not in any way, shape, or form sitting here saying, like, I got it figured out. Like, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. I'm just fucking grinding away mm-hmm. like everybody else trying to figure it out. That's it. Yeah. And it's like, but I'm trying to find happiness in the right. work of trying right. to figure it out. That's yeah. all right. it is. And and these conversations don't have to happen on a podcast. No. You know, like you and I, we talked on the phone for almost an hour the other night. You know? <laughs> yeah. And it was like, you know, and my wife said, who is that? I was like, well, you know, is Evan. She's like, isn't he? Too busy to be talking to you. I was like, <laughs> you know, but meaning that, you know, you know, call your friends, you know, yeah. sit down, you know, invite them out for coffee. Yeah. I've, yeah. Everybody's... You're better about that than I am. He'll, he'll call me and be like, cause he knows, cause I'm prone to withdraw and he'll call Are you me an introvert and... naturally? Yeah. I think I am. Yeah. I think I am. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll reach out and be like, Hey bro, you know? It's like it's almost like doing? it's almost like a nervous tick. Like I've had mm-hmm. conversations with guys that are like, "Hey man, if if we need to stay in touch, then maybe we're not as good as friends as I thought we were." Like I don't, right? You right. Know. Yeah. But at the same mm-hmm. time, like if somebody goes across my ticker tape for whatever reason, I'll immediately gr- there's a reason why I thought of them. Right. It, it doesn't, you know, there, I don't have to know what that reason is, but there's something that made me think of that person, and I'll just reach out and text. Hey man, you good? Just checking in. Sometimes that, you know turns into something else you know something quite you know lengthy yeah. something like, hey man i'm good how are you you know what i mean and just yeah. that little or nerd or something yeah back, whatever you bro know? you know I typically whatever, an eggplant bro. and that's right. what yeah, exactly. yeah hopefully yeah. that means oh he's doing great he's doing great <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my wife gets mad because that's all i respond with it's like yeah. Eggplant and peach emojis. That's all I do. Like, I'm just a fucking child. It's the only reason that we exist. Yeah, man. It's the only reason we exist. Yeah. Is to procreate. That's right. That's what our brain is completely, you know, made to do. But somehow we stack all this other bullshit on top of it. Yeah, my wife sent me a meme. I showed it to Matt. My wife sent me a meme this morning, or it was like a kid that had wrote, you know, a boy had wrote on his test. It was... Yeah, it was like a real elementary school. Right. Yeah, it was like... What are the three things you want to do when you grow up? And he's like, find a girlfriend, kiss her, and number three was rule the world. And I, was like, <laughs> I was like, that is millions of years of male evolution in three lines of text, you know, from like a third grader or whatever, you know. Find a girlfriend, kiss, kiss her, her, rule, rule the, the world. world. Yeah. 
that like sums it all up. You don't need to read <laughs> yeah. the myth of Sif- <laughs> Sisyphus. You don't need to talk yeah. about Socrates. Yeah. Like, find a girl, kiss her, and rule the we world. Just, yeah. If you just work we just on that, we just wasted three, three hours, hours of <laughs> shit. Priorities when we could have just fucking went through the priorities of work. Mm-hmm. I love it. Well, gents, it's always fun. Thank uh, you. Let's do it. Hey, I wanted to say real quick. Sir. That we know people that are in a certain unit that are doing very important work right now. And you provided them with a ton of coffee, and they very, very much appreciate it. I always do. Like, you know, the, for us, like, that's the thing that I constantly remind people is there are some, like, incredibly passionate, mission-driven um, people that love this country that get up and go to work every day for the benefit of us so we can sleep nice and cozy in our beds and pontificate about bullshit on a <laughs> yeah. podcast. And... Yeah. We just have to keep that in mind. There's a lot of fucking really incredible, talented people that dedicate their lives to the protection of this nation. And fucking, dude, we owe them a huge, great, a huge debt of gratitude. We do. Yep. We do. Amen and, to that. Yep. Thanks, Buzz. Cheers, Thanks. boys. Yeah. Thanks, Evan. Yeah.